Well, good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to this SME program for energy efficiency. This PDF service final event uh, is a pleasure uh, to have you all on board. Um, we have quite a busy morning ahead. Uh, I really hope you will enjoy all the speeches we have today. We have uh, very interesting presentations. Let's move uh, to the agenda so you can uh, take a look on what's expected for today. Uh, as you can see, uh, as I was talking before, we have quite a bit uh, agenda ahead. Um, first of all, I introduce myself. My name is uh, Mariana Fernandez. I'm the head of communications uh, at Sustainable Innovations and responsible for the communication in this PDR project. Uh, we will uh, develop further what is a Speedia. Um, the first speech of today is precisely uh, an overview of Speedia, what is a Speedia and what uh, goals we have achieved. Uh, this speech will be by Patrick Lyons. Uh, you can uh, now see him on, uh, on the screen. I hope um, then we will move to the collaboration we've been uh, working uh, in uh, with uh, several speedier related initiatives. The speedier is a H2020 uh, innovation and a research project. And we've been collaborating uh, such uh, uh, wide uh, with several um, projects also addressing energy efficiency in SMEs. First of all, uh, we will be having uh, Derlev Olszewski. Uh, he will be uh, speaking about the, the SME project. Then we will move on to the SME Empower uh, Efficiency Project by Grigoris Papagianis of the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. Then uh, we have uh, a speech by Marek Ovella uh, from the Innovias uh, project. And, uh, Afterwards, we will move on to uh, Each Driver um, by Erudino Llano from Fundación Circe. Uh, afterwards, we will be having uh, Filipos Nexis that will explain further about the AAA project. And finally, the ICCE uh, project by Simone Sanoni. But that's, that's not the end. Of course, uh, we will continue with uh, what uh, Speedier has achieved on these 30 months of uh, investigation. We have uh, achieved quite a good uh, Speedier service and we've implemented it in uh, four uh, different pilot regions. We will explain and develop further uh, on the hands of uh, four people that will uh, develop the different uh, cases on their pilot regions. First of all, we will be having Romania uh, by Ion Diogenago uh, of Manage Energy of Romania. Then we will be having uh, Patrick O'Reilly from Ireland, the, from the Technological University of the Shannon, Italy uh, from Nicola Di Gisi of Politecnico di Milano, and finally from uh, Spain, Eva Martin from PCT Cartuja. But the session, of course, we will continue with uh, the session and we will offer information on uh, the uh, state of the art uh, speedier tools that we've developed. First of all, we will be uh, speaking about the training app uh, developed by IRC. Uh, Ruchi Agrawal will uh, speak more uh, about this training app. Secondly, we will be having uh, Diana Romeo from ETEC in Catalonia uh, speaking about the energy expert support tool they develop uh, very interesting tools. Uh, I certainly invite you to, to join us to this session. Uh, we will continue with all the training materials for uh, energy experts and SMEs that we've developed. Uh, you will find also quite interesting these speeches. Uh, first of all, we will be having again Patrick O'Reilly to explain further on this and also Nicola Di Giusti. We will uh, speak as well uh, about the replication and business models uh, on the hands of uh, Ruchi Agrawal and Carla Sebastiani, uh, my colleague from Sustainable Innovations. 
and we will finally go to the uh, best practices we've developed and standardization from my colleague, Tom Flynn from DSC. And that will be the end of the event. But first of all, um, a couple of webinar notices. Uh, this session is being recorded. Usually, uh, I'm pretty sure that you will uh, ask on the chat that if this session will be available afterwards, uh, sure it will be. Uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, it will be made available on the Speedier website, uh, as well as the presentations you will see today. Obviously, as you saw on the agenda, we have a quite busy session today, but that doesn't mean that you uh, are not able to participate and interact with our speakers. I certainly encourage you to use the chat function to enter your questions uh, directly uh, to the speakers and participate with them. You will receive uh, their answers and uh, due to time constraint, if it's not possible, to answer anything, we will just compile all your questions and try to answer them after this session. And certainly, as I was speaking, uh, uh, it's important to participate and answer the polls. Over there, you will have uh, the um, social media channels and the Speedia project uh, website where, where I was saying uh, uh, this session and the presentations will be uh, made available. But first, um, before moving to uh, Patrick uh, Lyon's presentation, where he will uh, address the Speedia project main goals and, and objectives, I will just uh, would like to, um, to send you a couple of questions just to uh, know you more. Uh, first of all, which uh, part of the world are you joining us uh, from today? Uh, I will just launch the question. I suppose you can now see on the screen uh, which part of the world. Uh, we have people coming from Europe mostly. I can see you're voting. Uh, there's another option, joining from Middle East, Africa, Australia, North America, maybe. I can see that you have now voted half of you. Um, we'll give a couple of seconds more for just for you to vote. I see that most people are coming from from Europe. Well, that that uh, I, I can understand because in the, in the time uh, of the webinar, I will just. Uh, finalize the, the vote and I will share you on screen what's voted. You can see that uh, most people, uh, all, of, uh, all of you are coming uh, from Europe. Uh, then I have another question uh, for you. Uh, what is your background of the people joining today? Let's see what's your background. I see many engineers, business development, energy expert. Wow, we have different profiles here. Let's give a couple of seconds more for you to vote. And I will finalize uh, the vote and share on the screen. Okay, I will find now. And you can see on the screen, what uh, the results are. Well, amazing. We have uh, several profiles. I really hope you will enjoy uh, this, uh, this session. And um, now I stop sharing. I will um, mute myself and I will uh, certainly leave the floor uh, to Patrick so he can, um, sorry. So he can start his presentation. Patrick, the floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everybody. And well, uh, I'd just like to echo Mariana's uh, thoughts and comments regarding, um, great to see such a, a big group here online to, to look at this final event of 
of Speedier. So what I'm going to do over the next few minutes um, is present an overview of Speedier and highlight some of the, the key learnings and um, key achievements of the project. So next slide there. So where we came from uh, in Speedier is thinking about, you know, why are, you know, why are people not engaging with energy audits, SMEs especially? And so, you know, the first thing was we wanted to understand the scale of the problem. And so uh, one of our earliest surveys uh, was looking at asking organizations in the, sec in the SME sector, have you had an energy audit in the last five years? Um, in, in most jurisdictions, I just want to change this here so I get the whole screen. In most jurisdictions, they say yes. Um, sorry, sorry, they said no, excuse me. And, um, and, and the minority said that they had some. So basically people aren't really getting energy audits done in the past few years. Uh, finance, uh, et cetera, is a, um, is a barrier to this. Next slide, please. Um, and does your organization have an energy manager? So again, um, if, if you're going to have an energy manager, it does um, enable the, a change in culture, um, an extra focus on energy matters, um, you know, and, and with that framework, one can look to um, reduce the energy consumption within the business and also reduce the carbon uh, production of a business. But unfortunately, not all organizations and SMEs have the capacity and have the resource to actually dedicate a full-time person or even a part-time person to, uh, to, to becoming an energy manager. So, for example, in Ireland, 65% of the respondents said that they didn't have an energy manager. And in Romania, that figure rose up to 91%. Next slide, please. And, you know, coming down from having an energy manager, um, do you have an energy policy? So energy managers often would be the people who would lead the energy policy within an organization. And again, um, you can see it's fairly consistent in this case that the majority of uh, the respondents in each of the jurisdictions said that they didn't have um, an energy policy in place for their organization. And again, not having an energy policy is, is a significant barrier to adopting energy conservation measures and to the general decarbonization of a business. Next slide, please. So that's the, the background. And again, setting the scene, the EU um, has an efficiency target uh, of, um, excuse me, of, of an improvement of 32.5% by 2030. Member states must set up initiatives, incentives to assist SMEs to undertake energy audits under Article 8 of the Energy Efficiency Directive. So we're, we're bound by law to uh, make this happen. And, you know, we can see, you know, in the context of COP26, the challenges to decarbonize the whole economy, not just SMEs, are really challenging, particularly for uh, developing, developed countries. Um, SMEs account for 99.98 of all enterprises in Europe. So, you know, it's hugely important um, to address the challenges with respect to decarbonization in the sector because they represent such a large proportion of businesses. And collectively, collectively, SMEs account for over 13% of total energy demand in Europe. So huge amounts of energy are consumed in the SME sector in Europe. So if, um, you know, if a project such as Speedier can make an impact in decarbonizing this sector, you know, it is quite a significant, uh, uh, a quite significant thing. And so SMEs overall have great potential to contribute to achieving EU's uh, efficiency targets. So, next slide. So um, one of the earliest parts of the project was um, understanding what are the main barriers to implementing energy efficiency measures. And um, in this case, in the different jurisdictions, there was probably a, a little bit more of a spread of different responses. Um, but um, I think the key one that came across was a lack of finance. And um, also, um, a lack of time, no control of the building. So there's a bit of a spread, but I think finance is one that, that comes through quite a lot. And this is some of the, this is results from one of the surveys that uh, the pilot leaders uh, organized as part of the Speedier project. Next slide, please. And um, these are the 
answers from the energy experts. And so they're, they're pretty similar, but you can see actually with the energy experts, the lack of finance is, is, a, is an even bigger um, consideration from their point of view, that they believe that that is, is a much bigger one. Next. So um, following a, a review of the, the survey results, uh, literature review, engaging with the SMEs themselves, um, you know, probably when in the inception of the project, we would have identified a number of barriers. So how does and how would Speedier look to address those barriers? So we looked at the barriers and look at how we can, you know, support uh, SMEs to, to overcome those barriers. And, and summarizing there, we have the, the lack of time and uh, the what addresses that is the Speedier ring fencing mechanism. A lack of, sorry, that was lack of finance. A lack of time, the Speedier export carries out most of the work as an outsource activity. A lack of knowledge, uh, the Speedier expert advice on the best package of measures. Low priority, low priority is, a, is a, a common thing for a lot of SMEs. And Speedier expert aligns energy related projects to strategic business direction and builds and supports an energy culture. And of course, there is a perceived risk uh, from uh, adopting energy conservation measures. And um, Speedier addresses this by um, the investment for um, any energy conservation measure, it comes from the achieved savings. And so the speed your expert also can be achieved savings. So just de-risks the whole um, the whole pathway towards decarbonization of business. And there's no control of the building. And so speed your is testing this approach with, with landlords. Next slide, please. How does speed your help? So it's a, a one-stop shop service, and it takes an, an integrated approach to energy management. So it's looking at uh, the different aspects, including the, the finance, the, the different barriers that we talked about earlier in the previous slide, uh, and also providing all that information and support in one place. SMEs will outsource the energy management to uh, a speedier expert who provides information, advice, energy auditing, and assistance to implement the energy conservation measures. And speedier is self financing, something that we touched on in the previous slide using the ring fencing mechanism, which we touch on later. And Speedier removes the hassle from energy management to ensures that SMEs receive tailored advice that suits their business. Next slide, please. Um, this slide uh, provides an overview of, of Speedier itself. So um, four countries from all the way from across Europe, Romania, Italy, Spain, and Ireland. Um, we have an overall budget of 2.165 million. It's 30 month duration. And we have nine partners from the four countries outlined earlier. So you can see there uh, the different roles um, illustrating this slide, the different roles and activities that are being carried out as part of the different work packages. Next slide, please. A key thing that came through in both the surveys and literature and something that we touched on a little bit earlier was addressing the financial um, issues associated with adopting energy conservation measures. So um, Speedier employs and has deployed and implemented uh, a, an innovative uh, self-financing mechanism and we call this the ring fencing mechanism. And so it's, it's a, I don't know if you call it a virtual circle or, or whatever you might like. Um, the first stage of the Speedier approach is to implement no cost measures. And so the savings for the no, no cost measures can be used to pay for, uh, low cost measures, excuse me, well, first, set, first level is no cost measures. So these are probably culture changes, et cetera. And then the, the savings from the no cost measures can be then used to pay for the low cost measures. Savings then are made as we implement the, the low cost measures and those savings are ring fenced and used to be put into the mid cost measures and the high cost measures, uh, et cetera. And, and also these savings are also uh, used to pay, pay for the for the speed you're exporting. And, and that's kind of highlighted there on the, tab to the left. Um, next slide, please. Um, and wrapped around the, the ring face mechanism, which is addressing a specific issue with respect to finance, we have the whole uh, speedier approach. So uh, we have five stages. We have engage, and that's the sell the speedier service. And not it's not just a product, it's not just an audit. Uh, we identify opportunities risks uh, and rank the, the different investment opportunities by cost and value in the second stage. In the third stage, we implement the lowest cost, best value. Um, 
um, incent um, sorry, energy conservation measures and begin to build that energy culture. Measure and verify the, the savings made in the, in the previous stage and ring fence those savings and begin to reinvest. And you know, as we go through this uh, stages two, three, four, and five, with the uh, SME, we begin to build trust that the energy conservation measures are making a, both not only a, an impact in terms of carbon, um, which is which is hugely important, but also that the costs are are not uh, prohibitive, and that they are getting the savings required to um, invest in further energy conservation measures, and they begin to develop trust in the overall speed of process. So, please. So that is uh, me. Um, just as sorry, I, I skipped on there too much. Um, that is an overview of Speedier. So just in summary, what we have is um, at the core of it is the innovative ring fencing uh, mechanism, which um, addresses one of the key barriers to investment in energy conservation measures for SMEs. And wrapped around that, we have this uh, Speedier service definition and, and our process. And you know, key to that is, is we build culture, um, we build confidence, and um, you know, SMEs can see the benefits of um, engaging with the speedier service from a very early stage, and um, that is what the the outputs from the project are demonstrating. And um, we'd be happy to take more questions, and you learn a bit more about each of the individual elements as we go through the day. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick. That was uh, certainly an interesting presentation. Um, we will just move uh, to the speedier related initiatives. For those uh, who join uh, later today, I was explaining at the beginning uh, on the agenda that uh, speedier, we just saw that is uh, an innovative project addressing energy efficiency in SMEs. And Speedier has been collaborating with several uh, projects uh, addressing the, the, the same problem, but from different perspectives. In this case, we will start with uh, the DSME project. We have uh, on screen that left of Teski, uh, who will provide an overview of this project. That left, uh, the, the floor is yours. Yes. Uh, hello, dear partners from the Speedier project, dear participants. I'm just uh, happy to give you five minutes about the DESME project. Um, yes, as Mariana said it before, thanks again for the invitation. We want to address the SMEs to improve the energy efficiency for the SMEs in a little bit different way. We want to make it, even though we are all Europeans, we want to make it a little bit more national organized because uh, I think the, the requirements for energy efficiency are, are varying over the different countries in Europe. Probably southern European countries have different uh, requirements in central or northern European, eastern have a little bit different, much colder winters, uh, I don't know. So this is what we are testing out in Desme. Next slide, please. And for this, we want to make uh, the SMEs more profitable. I think this is maybe the easiest way to do it. Uh, we want to enable the companies to, to find the good solution of multiple benefits. There was also a major call before that. I think uh, maybe the speedy uh, project is one of the multiple benefits uh, calls which was before. And we want to, to improve the energy management approaches for SMEs. We want to tell them, okay, if you do this small scale measures, then you will have the highest uh, benefits. We want to show them to read the numbers within their companies much better. And so we are developing, developing some uh, broader training scheme and we will test it and improve it, of course, to make the SMEs more efficient in what they do for energy efficiency and to lower their carbon emissions. This is just uh, one of the objectives. Second is, that we want to support uh, the EU policymakers for new for a new energy efficiency framework. I think uh, currently you have seen or you have heard also about the political discussions how to have this uh, taxonomy 
investment aspects, which will very likely also affect uh, quite a few SMEs in a in a in a ongoing process. And we want to help both the policymakers, but also the prepare the SMEs to be better better prepared for this process. And for this, we just make proposals and uh, recommendations. And last but not least, we want to enhance and to support the DESME approach with a, uh, again with the benefits for the SMEs. We want to uh, enhance that on the national level with the national authorities and we want to prepare, support them also how to make it much better, how to make it easier for SMEs and how to give it also in some institutional uh, framework, some 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 uh, side sidelines informations, how to make it better from that point of view. So yes, we are addressing just a certain small small part of the uh, work for energy efficiency and energy efficiency consultancy. And uh, here we just uh, the DESME speeds meets speedier side a slide I named it. So of course we have a four step uh, now four major step seven sm uh, smaller step approach how to make this possible. Of course, business model analysis and cost structure analysis very important. Then we go to the real energy auditing uh, phase. Quite a few, uh, some, you know, the, some of our partners are also active energy auditors as Cleopas also. And we will do also the, like the carbon footprint estimations. And this is where we then can address the best, I think the, may, the, the very important part of the third stage, which is the multiple benefits identifications and the evaluation uh, which is done on site uh, of the consultants but then in the last page uh, in the last stage we just uh, implement that at the SME stage so for that uh, we have uh, I think a consistent way to improve the multiple benefits uh, approach at the SMEs so next slide please So, yes, <laughs> I think uh, DESME has a very positive outlook. Uh, when we look into the savings which we can achieve, and this is, I think, for all the partnering projects as well, and I'm interested, very much interested to see how the other projects are addressing this, because we want to learn for free from this presentation today. Then we want to do uh, quite a few energy audits and we want to do trainings with companies and you see the numbers. We want to have 50 extra audits, 25 energy management systems uh, based on, on the ISO 50001 and multiple benefits approach. And then of course we see the very good scalability after the projects which will improve the, the uh, benefits for the companies. This is like uh, the one very big objective. Then we want to, to show the companies, as I said before, how to make profit. I think energy efficiency can, or energy efficient measures can be done very often, very profitable. And we just want to show the SMEs, make these measures first, save money, then you are more happy with the multiple benefits and then you are also more happy with energy efficiency. Uh, oh, sorry, I just took it from top to the top down. Uh, of course it was, uh, <laughs> I prepared myself a little bit wrong. So uh, first of all, we want to raise awareness in the companies and also for the policy makers. And this is done because we are already active consultants uh, for energy efficiency. Then we want to develop the working, uh, several working models and we will test them and evaluate them and have a very good feedback scheme and uh, with the SMEs. Yes, and then as I said before, then we want to, to show the companies much more in depth how to make money with energy efficiency and then on top you see the numbers which we want to achieve. And I think if we go to the next slides, then I'm happy that I'm part of a great uh, project of DESME. We are at nine partners. Uh, I just double check, but I think it was always nine. Yes, we are nine partners and uh, across Europe and uh, we are open for any contact and we look forward to collaborate with the partners available here in this presentation as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Detlef. It was certainly 
interesting to, to hear how DSME is approaching energy efficiency. We will just uh, move to the next uh, presentation. We have now DSME in power efficiency, uh, Grigoris Papaginis from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. We will uh, be addressing this uh, amazing project. Grigoris, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mariana. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm uh, really happy to be with uh, Speeder Project here in this final event because we practically started almost together uh, in the first bunch of the projects that they had to deal with SMEs. So um, I will uh, present you very uh, briefly uh, what we are doing in the SME Empower Efficiency Project. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, in, in our project, uh, actually, we want to empower the SMEs in order to reduce their energy consumption and uh, how this uh, can be done. We will practically want to motivate and facilitate the SMEs to start uh, doing energy audits, to become familiar with uh, the energy management concepts and tools, to check funding opportunities, and finally, to implement energy saving measures in order to increase their energy efficiency. Next slide, please. Okay, to achieve this uh, in this project, we are uh, working uh, inside the SMEs practically uh, following an holistic approach that uh, uh, in, uh, aims to, to, to build capacity at all levels in the SMEs, uh, for, from the energy managers uh, up to the decision makers and the rest of the staff in the SMEs using proper uh, training, uh, to, uh, training and other tools. So uh, we developed and offer uh, education and training courses that uh, will be attended by more than 700 energy managers in different SMEs, in different sectors. Uh, but uh, this is uh, not the only thing. We also provide some short trainings uh, that uh, uh, will engage 800 persons inside the SMEs. We go to the SMEs and we offer a short training to the decision makers and the rest of the staff, not only the energy managers. Uh, we are doing field work with at least 160 SMEs. And also we, we have targeted workshops and consultation on funding options. Uh, finally, the project uh, will develop some long-lasting training tools, which is a training handbook that will be available in, in seven languages, a web flat platform will, which will provide energy analytics together with tools for uh, monitoring and targeting and measurement and verification. Next slide, please. Uh, this project runs already for two years. Uh, we started a little bit uh, later than Speedier, and we will uh, conclude a little bit later also. Uh, in the first two years, first we worked uh, in identifying and understanding the problems and the barriers as well as the opportunities. So we had the first round of uh, workshops for SMEs uh, from where we uh, concluded on uh, some framework analysis, uh, research on funding mechanisms and uh, a certification scheme for energy auditors and managers. And then we developed uh, our educational and training courses for SMEs. Uh, first of all, we designed the courses and we accredited them uh, by certain SME, uh, ECTS in all the participating uh, partner countries. And then we developed a training handbook and delivered the first, and uh, we are now delivering the second edition of the educational and training courses. Uh, for the moment, we had uh, almost uh, 550 participants at, uh, in these two first editions of uh, the educational and training courses. And we had also the participation of uh, 112 SMEs. Next slide, please. Uh, besides uh, the content of the training courses and the tools and the training we provided in the SMEs, we also developed uh, some energy analytic tools uh, that they are available in uh, our web platform. Uh, together with the training material uh, in uh, all uh, partner uh, languages. And uh, these uh, tools uh, can be used either for uh, an energy calendar uh, and energy analytics, as well as uh, for the uh, monitoring and targeting and the measurement and verification. Besides this, we also had a, a high dissemination and communication activity, uh, including newsletters, press releases, participation in various events, videos, publications, and what we considered uh, a very important uh, point, the collaboration with the sister projects. And uh, as a result of this collaboration is this presentation here. Next slide, please. 
Okay, uh, we are now in the last uh, year of our project and uh, what comes next, we have a third edition uh, of uh, education and training course to, to de deliver in uh, each partner country, uh, which will be accompanied with uh, practical action in SMEs and short trainings again. And then we have uh, once again, uh, two rounds of targeted workshops. Uh, one is already running. Uh, the, these workshops will be on the funding opportunities for SMEs and on policy recommendations. We will provide some policy recommendations and uh, together with the ongoing and uh, dissemination and communication activities, we are focusing on the sustainability of uh, what came out of uh, this project. And uh, the sustainability is actually uh, focused on the accredited uh, courses and their exploitation plan, on strategic collaborations, on uh, exploitation of the project tools and the development of the local and European groups for of energy specialists. I think that this was all for uh, our project. Thank you very much for your attention. Really happy to be with uh, Speeder. Thank you very much. Uh, as uh, Grigoli certainly pointed out, uh, the collaboration together with other related initiatives is key to boost uh, this energy efficiency in SMEs. And with that, we will continue uh, with the next project uh, addressing also uh, energy efficiency in SMEs. Uh, we have Innovas and Mara Corbella uh, will be speaking about the project. Mara, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you uh, to the consortium of Speedier from, for having us today. Uh, I'm here representing the Innovas project. Um, next slide, I will just briefly tell you something about the, the project, which started in June 2019. So we are basically at the final rush of this uh, uh, project, which will end on May 22. And uh, we are, our consortium is composed by 10 partners from six countries. So we have uh, Italy, Germany, uh, Poland, Slovenia, and Belgium. And uh, as uh, IPLE uh, from Bologna, we are the coordinator of this uh, project. Next slide, please. Okay, so the main uh, aim of Innovia's project is to increase and spread the energy culture and create an enabling environment to implement energy saving measures in SMEs. In specific, our sectors are the construction sector, the food production sector, and the chemical industry. And the idea is to um, increment, uh, uh, enlarge the um, knowledge of SMEs related to the topics of uh, uh, energy audit and uh, uh, related energy saving measures that can be uh, adopted. Okay, so the main activities since the beginning of the project uh, have been um, the analysis of the barriers that uh, the SMEs usually met uh, when trying to implement energy audit or adopt energy efficiency measures. Then uh, inform about the uh, financial incentives that exist in each country for the SMEs. Highlight uh, uh, the costs and savings uh, of energy audits, and we also shifted uh, the narrative from uh, uh, savings related to the uh, financial costs uh, to savings related to other aspects uh, which are not strictly related to uh, economical costs. Then uh, we offer practical trainings uh, in the form of uh, in-situ training, uh, so classical training uh, during uh, um, lessons, uh, frontal lessons. Then we have in-company trainings uh, during which uh, uh, the partners are going uh, uh, to the um, premises of the companies uh, with the energy auditors uh, in order to uh, make a sort of pre-audit. Uh, to highlight which are the energy expenses uh, and costs uh, and, and the, the strategies that can be adopted uh, by these companies in order to, to reduce uh, the energy expenses and uh, costs, of course. 
and then create uh, a huge network uh, all over Europe uh, between, uh, um, of course, SMEs, uh, which are the main target, uh, the partners of the consortium, energy auditors and uh, agencies, uh, other intermediaries, uh, policymakers, uh, and so on. Uh, next slide, please. As already said, the, the main target group uh, is uh, composed by uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, but of course uh, uh, we are addressing other groups uh, uh, fundamental for the uh, adoption of energy audit and uh, energy efficiency measures in SMEs. So we are also um, discussing and in contact with the industrial associations, policymakers, institutional actors, because of course uh, there is a, a huge role of uh, uh, public institutions uh, related to the uh, finance, financing aspect and the financial institutions at large. Next slide, please. Okay. What has been done so far, uh, the, of course, the first uh, uh, analysis uh, and research phases, so the analysis of the attitude of SMEs uh, towards energy efficiency, uh, the analysis of the um, regulatory, normative and financial conditions existing in each uh, country partner of the project, the analysis of the non-technical barriers that uh, these uh, uh, that our targets uh, meet in adopting energy efficiency measures. Then we have already produced uh, uh, the first step of the training, so a set of uh, web-based module for um, the training of SMEs. Um, and then we have designed and started to implement in situ and in company trainings. Uh, we, are, we are not done yet because the, the work is uh, uh, still in progress, uh, but we will uh, finish this activity um, within uh, January or February uh, 2022. And of course, we have started since uh, several months uh, to create this network uh, I was talking about, uh, which will take the name of Alliance for Energy Audits in SMEs. Mm, I think this is the last slide from my side. Yes, this is uh, the list of our uh, channels. You can follow uh, the, the implementation of our activities on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, uh, on the website and then on the social uh, networks. And uh, if you have questions, uh, we are here and uh, you have also our contacts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Marta. Uh, it was a pleasure collaborating with you and to have you on board uh, today. Uh, you have the contacts, uh, Marta was just mentioning, of the project coordinator of the Innovators project, as well as the uh, media relations. Uh, but of course, if you have any doubt, uh, I would just like to remind that this session is being recorded and it will be uh, shared afterwards uh, and made available online just in case you have uh, to leave. And uh, obviously, I certainly encourage you as well to ask uh, uh, questions through, through the chat uh, to, the, to the speakers. Um, maybe if uh, they are not able to answer them during this webinar, we will compile them and make sure we will contact you afterwards uh, so you can um, have them answer. Now is a turn to the E2 Driver project. Uh, Erudino Llanos uh, from the Fundación Circe. We will be speaking about uh, the project and uh, providing some guidelines about uh, this project. Edu, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. So first of all, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this to this event. I just would like to apologize because I was not able to get a meeting room so probably you will get some noise in the background but I hope you can hear me correctly so um okay so the e2 driver project if you yeah the e2 driver project is a project that is founded by the by the program horizon 2020 
the objective of the project is to boost the energy efficiency in the European automotive sector. We do it through an, a scheme of training plus a consultancy to the, to the companies. Uh, we are totally focused on a small and medium enterprises in uh, four countries, Germany, Spain, France and Italy. And the objective is to train at least uh, 40 companies. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so regarding the first part of the work that we are doing in this project, and the E2Driver Capacity Building Program is uh, composed by a blended learning format training, and the majority part is uh, done via online. And uh, the, I'm sorry. And the training is customizable depending on the needs and interest of the companies. It is true that we also adapt to the to the to the different profiles of the of the trainees. And indeed, we have included an algorithm in the platform that uh, classifies the different trainees in the four um, profiles that we have defined it. So managers, science and engineering professional, technical managers, and technicians. So and the yes, this is the interface of the e driver platform that we are using for the online part of the training. And uh, okay, if you move on to the to the next slide, please. Okay, here you can see uh, two complementary tools that we have developed in the in the training. The first one is the, yeah, is the uh, virtual reality uh, tool that is composed by an exercise that um, we use in order to train uh, the trainees about how to perform different energy efficiency uh, measures and in order to and in order to measure um, uh, different parameters in an electric cabinet. We also um, have created um, a two tools that the trainees can use in order to self-assess their companies in energy and financial terms. Uh, if you move on to the next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, after the training, what we do with the with the companies is to help um, them in the identification of different energy efficiency measures. And also we support them in the estimation of the impact that uh, these uh, measures will cause to the, uh, to the facilities of the companies. In line with that, we finally close the action with this company by um, helping them to define uh, the most appropriate strategy in order to implement uh, and the energy efficiency measures that we have identified. Okay, so um, in general, as a summary, uh, we could define the following benefits of the companies um, that they get when they participate in the two driver project. And they uh, obviously get the customized and free capacity building program. And also by considering the recommendation that we um, work with them in the, in the, in the post training phase, um, in the post training phase with the, with the companies, they are able to identify different ways in order to increase the ener in the economic and energy and energy savings. Obviously, uh, all the workers in the in the companies and and the, the the workers that are involved in the project in the in the project and the training obviously uh, acquire new skills and also and uh, they 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 acquire uh, important knowledge in the area of the energy efficiency and energy audits, uh, trying to uh, empower companies. Um, uh, for for implement uh, autonomously different energy efficiency measures. Okay, so additionally, uh, they also get um, advice during the during the training period. Obviously, they, uh, we have the in the post training period where we perform this consultancy with the with the companies. But during the training period, we also work with them in order to identify uh, possible actions that they could that they could implement. Uh, in the end of the of the training, all the trainees uh, get a certification, 
and uh, obviously they have a priority in the participation of different workshops and uh, the companies will get uh, important and, and useful uh, information about the current state of the of the automotive sector and finally regarding the current state of the of the project uh, we have implemented the e2 driver methodology um in the so the training and the and the post training uh, advice in in nine pilot companies uh, two in spain two in italy uh, two in france and three in germany uh, with a total of 90 students um, now we are in a process of fine tuning of the methodology and the and the platform because obviously during the pilot phase we identify several weaknesses, and um, we have uh, been working in order to solve all these uh, all these uh, weak points uh, in order to construct a, a to build a, a, a consolidate and a final version of the methodology. So uh, we expect to have this final version of the methodology and the platform in the end of this year. And we will start the second phase of the replication uh, training. So the second phase of the training. So uh, in the replication companies in at least 31 um, additional companies. And the final objective is to get that um, the, the the whole list of companies uh, will implement at least 65 energy efficiency measures and um, in total our objective is to at least suggest uh, 100. Uh, as a consequence, the final the final impact of the E2 driver project will be uh, 13 gigabytes uh, hours per year of energy savings in as a whole, so in total. And in the end of the project, um, we will train also 60 trainers um, about the E2 driver methodology with uh, with the hope that they uh, will be able to implement this uh, E2 driver methodology that we have created in beyond the end of the project in, in, in some way. Okay, so I think it's everything. Uh, here you have our website and the, yes, the, our social medias. Um, in the website, you could find obviously the characteristics of the of the training. Uh, as I said before, is quite special because we implement uh, uh, several in innovative approaches in pedagogical terms so uh, yes the ontological flip teaching virtual reality and and so on so i think that you will enjoy if you if you visit this this website so thank you very much <laughs> thanks to you it was certainly uh, interesting and worth uh, giving uh, a visit to the into driver website let's move now uh, to the next uh, presentation we have uh, on board the triple a project it's Filipos Mexis uh, on behalf of the project who will be uh, speaking and developing uh, a bit more what's uh, going on with the triple a uh, project Filipos uh, the floor is yours hello can you hear me loud and clear yes okay because I have uh, some uh, internet problem connection, but I hope it will run smoothly. So I'm Philip Mexis. I'm uh, glad to participate uh, in the Speed Gear final event. I will present you our work and results of the AAA project. The official name is AAA, Enhancing at an Early Stage the Investment Value Chain of Energy Efficiency Project. We can move to the next slide, please. So uh, some introductory info. The AAA project has been running since September 2019. Um, it has uh, received funding from the European Union from the Horizon 2020 program. Eight countries are participating within the AAA project, uh, in which uh, big European banks, uh, such as the AB and AMRO and the Toulouse Bank of Greece, uh, research institutes, universities, and also companies uh, that implement energy efficiency projects. We can move to the next slide. Uh, so the AAA aims to foster energy efficiency financing. So the scope is to promote investments that have a strong capacity to meet their commitments at an early stage, uh, at the stage of conceptualization. So we will identify the AAA investments in order to foster the sustainable growth 
And overall, our aim is to reduce res the respective time and effort required at the crucial phase of the investment's conceptualization. Uh, overall, the transparency and the efficiency of the respective decision making will be increased in order to make the energy efficiency investments more attractive for investors, financiers, and also for project developers. We could move to the next slide, please. Um, the AAA approach has been based on three main pillars. The pillars is the assess, the agree, and the assign. The assess pillar uh, answers the questions on how to assess the financing instruments and risks at an early stage. The agree pillar answers the questions on how to agree on the AAA investments based on selected key performance indicators. And the assign pillar answers the questions on how to assign the identified investments ideas with possible financing schemes. Uh, in total, the AAA methodology offers standardized process for the identification of attractive AAA project ideas, uh, funding strategies such as the green loans, green mortgages, green bonds, and the state-of-the-art energy financing auctions, and also uh, aims to create portfolios of energy efficiency projects that better match with the needs of their respective beneficiaries. Also, we have performed a consultation process in order to engage national stakeholders in the eight countries that they participate in the AAA project in order to enable the development, the implementation, the testing, and the exploitation of the proposed AAA innovative schemes. And for the AAA, we could move to the next slide, please. So the AAA stakeholders categorized in five main categories, financing bodies, companies and project developers, policymakers, researchers and academia, and another category which we have other uh, stakeholders such as technology suppliers, property, real estate, and association. I will not stand in this slide, we can move to the next. Uh, because I want to, pre to present the AAA project uh, briefly. Uh, the main uh, result of the AAA project are the AAA standardized tools, which are the key elements to pave the way for identifying and financing AAA investments, and also to materialize the three pillars AAA approach. So we have three tools, the assess, the agree, and the assign. The assess tool evaluates the risk and the maturity of investments, and also checks the EU taxonomy compliance of the projects. Um, and in this step, 113 financially attractive projects have been collected. Within the agreed tool, uh, the AAA ideas are being benchmarked uh, by an electorate multi-criteria decision analysis, and the projects are categorized into three classes, the AAA, the reserved, and the rejected. And also in the assigned tool, um, requests uh, of uh, investors are being uh, performed in order to finance the already benchmarked projects. We could move to the next slide, please. So uh, also, we, along with the AAA tools, we have created the AAA database on energy efficiency financing. The database includes critical aspects of energy efficiency financing, such as the implementation risks, the risk mitigation strategies, preference of investors uh, regarding energy efficiency investments, the financial performance of successfully implemented energy efficiency projects, models, financing models and instruments, and also the necessity to boost energy efficiency based on sustainable development goals indices. We could move to the next slide, please. So uh, I will uh, present some uh, figures about the AAA project. We have uh, collected already 115 energy efficiency project ideas. We have um, engaged more than 700 stakeholders and we have identified these stakeholders. Uh, we have created synergy with 50 relevant uh, energy efficiency uh, related projects, Horizon 2020 projects. We have uh, created questionnaires in order to engage stakeholders. We have uh, scientific publications and a lot of other results. You can, we can move to the next slide. You can find our results and our progress uh, in uh, our uh, social media websites, in the tools and database websites. We can move to the final uh, slide. Uh, here you can view our website, uh, our email, and our social media um, uh, social media accounts in order to, to see all the progress of the AAA project. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be participating in this video final event. 
Thank you very much, uh, Filippos. Uh, it's truly a pity that we don't have enough time to show all your developments uh, and uh, interested information. But I invite uh, the, the, the people attending today to visit all the project websites and be informed about what's going on in terms of uh, energy efficiency and innovation. Thank you, Filippos. Um, and you. we will just move to the last uh, presentation of the Speedier uh, related initiatives because we still have one hour and a half ahead. Uh, this time will be uh, Simone Sanoni for the University uh, of Brescia, who will be uh, speaking about the ICCEE project and uh, its uh, developments and challenges. Simone, um, I suppose you are there. Yes, the thank you, Mariana. I cannot activate the video uh, since uh, you have interrupted me, so. I, I will do that we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, first of all, I see project. It's a EU uh, Horizon 2020 project founded. I'm the project coordinator and we are 13 partners on board. And uh, in the last slide, you will see the, the, the entire list of partners. Uh, go to the next slide uh, and uh, click uh, on the first, uh, the mission of the IC project is to look at the overall supply chain in food and beverage, especially uh, we are looking at cold chain, so temperature control chain, and we are tackling uh, different products, so from beverage, dairy products, fish, fruit and vegetables, and meat. Uh, apart from the uh, single perspective, uh, that is the usual way in which energy efficiency is tackled by companies, uh, like in the individual company perspective, uh, the one with the only green perspective, we are looking uh, at the overall supply chain perspective. So uh, we are uh, putting together different uh, partners of the chain and look uh, at the overall contribution on the energy uh, for the entire cold chain. And we have uh, three main perspectives. Uh, so uh, you can click on the slide probably. Okay, so the aim is to facilitate the uh, dissemination, promote the measures along the partners of the chain and uh, have an holistic perspective. Uh, so uh, have an overview of uh, the specific contribution of each partners to the entire supply chain impact <clears throat> and uh, as a, uh, an acceleration to investments, uh, different partners of the chain can collaborate together to gain more success. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so the project is mainly conceived in uh, uh, main five steps. So we have uh, a first phase uh, that is the model design of the entire uh, monitoring system that we have implemented in a tool. Uh, then uh, we have uh, already validated the tool and we have already started the capacity building activities uh, based also on the tool that we have developed. And finally, sharing and exploiting of the results over an, an higher number of the supply chain involved in the project will be performed. Next slide, please. And we have two main pillars as already introduced. We have a tool, a set of tools that we have implemented and it is freely available uh, already in the website of the project. And the aim of this tool is to, first of all, uh, suggest the, uh, uh, and show the holistic perspective of the entire chain and not just the single actor perspective and can support the what-if analysis and the benchmarking aspect that can be performed in a supply chain perspective. And then we have the capacity building program as, as a second pillar, and that is mainly uh, set in two different phases. A first phase that is mainly a, a transfer of knowledge uh, from uh, the partners of the project to companies, uh, uh, involving not only energy experts, but also non-energy experts uh, that with their, with their decisions usually uh, affect uh, the overall energy efficiency. And the second step of the capacity building where the tool will be proactively used 
and applied in different supply chains. Next slide, please. So the toolbox, uh, uh, it's a seven uh, set of uh, tool already available to download from the website of the project. Uh, the two main uh, tool are the cold supply chain tool and the life cycle assessment tool that are the main basic uh, uh, tool that can be used as a starting point of the decision analysis. Of course, using the other three uh, tools, the life cycle costing, the benchmarking on energy benefits, and non-energy benefit evaluator uh, can be added to the evaluation. And the overall what-if analysis can be performed using the multi-criteria analysis tool that entitles uh, uh, different algorithms to compare different decisions on energy efficiency measure that can be implemented in the chain. Next slide, please. We already performed national trainings uh, in parallel with the tool conception and validation. So during the national trainings, the tool were not the focal point, but uh, the focal point were mainly the holistic approach in the cold chain. And we have performed 18 workshop training uh, uh, approximately uh, 15,500 people. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, we ended this activity and we are starting and we are collecting the impact of these national trainings in terms of uh, uh, investments uh, that companies and different pa uh, participants uh, decided to think about or implemented after these uh, trainings. Next slide, please. Next. Uh, we have uh, launched uh, one month ago the Industry Informative Network. So it is a community of practitioners with the aim to put together the technology offers and technology demands in the specific uh, area of cold chain. So different te technology uh, provider can put uh, in this uh, platform their offer and uh, also the, user, the users can place demands and can uh, see uh, the offers. Of course, uh, this kind of uh, uh, community is uh, uh, mediated and is uh, uh, managed by the consortium partners of the project. Next slide, please. And company can, can take part to the project, of course, uh, with a set uh, of activities. Uh, also an e-learning platform. So there is a set of courses uh, already available. Uh, for all participants of the projects. Here you can see the link uh, and you can click and take part to the activities of the project, of course, also to the uh, Industrial Informative Network. Next slide, please. And here there is the entire list of partners covering different partners uh, over the Europe. Uh, and we have a Twitter account, of course. Uh, and there is also a YouTube channel where you can see the different tool, how they works and of course you can also download the tool uh, from the uh, project website and that's all thank you very much simone it was an uh, interesting presentation don't hesitate to visit the website and take a look on the materials simone just uh, presented before moving ahead uh, with the experience we've gotten in this different uh, speedier pilot regions uh, I certainly encourage you again uh, to ask uh, all the speakers your questions through the chats. I'm pretty sure that uh, after the presentations, you have quite a lot of questions for them. So please don't hesitate to ask them through the chat. Uh, we will try to answer them uh, during the webinar. And if uh, not possible, we will just compile them and um, try to answer after the webinar session. Before moving uh, ahead, I was just uh, curious on, um, on your opinion. I will just land uh, a question on what of measures shown uh, by the speedier related projects that uh, you just saw. Um, do you think uh, to be the most effective for energy efficiency? Maybe you have experience on that, maybe not, but just uh, thought. We have uh, been watching several options to, uh, to address the, the energy efficiency. We have seen uh, training materials develop. 
financing options uh, for those SMEs, uh, any expert support because sometimes in SMEs, uh, uh, they don't have the enough experience to address this energy efficiency problem. Uh, from your perspective, what will be the most effective measure to be implemented uh, on SMEs uh, to, to certainly improve uh, that energy efficiency? I saw that uh, you, uh, most of you voted. Uh, let's give a couple of seconds more for the uh, remaining people to vote. We have training, financial, expert support, maybe free audits, why not? And maybe you have other ideas that would be better uh, to implement. I will uh, now finalize the vote and share with you uh, what most of people voted. Seems to be uh, quite even between the training, financing and expert support. Uh, we will certainly get note of that uh, to continue our work uh, in this regard. And uh, with no uh, later comments from my side, I will now uh, stop the vote and uh, give the floor to uh, Jan Diogonegu. He is uh, responsible for the uh, Romanian pilot uh, in Expedia, and he will be uh, speaking about uh, his experience in Romania uh, in the implementation of energy efficiency. Jan, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating and welcome. Uh, we try to have a very brief presentation of the Romanian pilot. pilot uh, but uh, regarding the uh, last uh, question of Mariana, uh, I can assure you that uh, in the case of the speed year, not the finance uh, is the main uh, driving uh, of implementation of energy conservation machine, but the, for sure the trainings and the support uh, from expert uh, is the main uh, determination for, uh, for an SMEs. Uh, because uh, as you can know, for SMEs it's very hard to, to uh, take into consideration energy, energy efficiency, uh, mainly in this uh, hard time uh, during the COVID situation because they fight very much uh, to stay on the business. They look very much on the business continuity uh, first. Uh, regarding the Romanian pilot, uh, uh, we try from the very beginning to design the pilot implementation in uh, all the four countries uh, in two steps uh, in order to have uh, input uh, to make a necessary amendment to our speed years uh, methodology. Uh, in the Romanian, uh, we access uh, the industry of hospitality. We address uh, to the small hotels. And uh, of course, this industry was uh, very much affected uh, this year, but also in 2020. Because of the COVID situation, uh, they have to fight uh, a lot to stay on the business. For the first pilot, uh, we address only six SMEs, uh, but we have enough uh, input uh, for the second phase. Uh, but at, at the end, uh, we succeed to have on board uh, 41 SMEs. So we over uh, achieved the target. And the very much helpful for them was the training session. We succeed at the end to, to have, uh, to train uh, staff and uh, decision maker uh, on this uh, 41 SMEs. We access uh, 266 uh, staff and the decision makers. As you can see on this uh, table, we achieve uh, 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 from, uh, we identify enough uh, energy conservation measure in order to, to overachieve the target uh, we assume uh, at the beginning. Uh, at the end, uh, they will start uh, to implement uh, speed gear methodology taking the, from the not cost measure. Uh, Mariana, you can go to the next slide. Uh, we have here uh, an example from one small hotel 
which implement uh, already most of the energy conservation measures, starting uh, with the, the very basic and uh, no cost measure start to monitoring in order to, to have uh, under control the energy consumption, but also to identify in time uh, any anomaly in this one. After that, uh, inform uh, all their guests uh, about the, because they are have attention uh, energy conservation measure and have uh, certain targets, but also staff implement uh, training staff. And uh, this staff would be very useful in order to, to implement uh, on their daily, daily uh, uh, task uh, to, to, to have uh, very attentive uh, on the energy conservation measure. Also install a small device uh, in order to save uh, hot water. And in this case, we have uh, a small hotel in the middle of the country, which uh, make a small modification of the building. And in this occasion, he installed uh, energy efficiency uh, windows, but also have a good insulation, install a good insulation uh, of the building. Uh, on the coming period, uh, he already applied from some subsidy from the uh, European project in order to install uh, hot water uh, from the solar but also electricity for solar on their hotel in order to, to uh, go for the 2040-2050 uh, the to, to become uh, energy independent. That's all from the Romanian side. Uh, we still continue to work with uh, this one together with uh, the expert uh, Speedier prepared. We have uh, on board uh, also trainer from the uh, three main, uh, two main association of the energy auditor, also from the, the National Association of uh, Energy Manager, but also from uh, one energy agency. They want to, to prepare uh, 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 after the lifetime of the speed year uh, expert in order to help SMEs uh, with implementation. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you very much, Ian. Um, interesting, uh, the, the experience uh, in Romania. We will move now uh, to the uh, to Ireland uh, and uh, the experience over there. Uh, Patrick O'Reilly from the Technical uh, University of the Shannon will uh, develop further. Thanks, Mariana, uh, and uh, again, welcome to everyone this morning. Uh, so as in Ireland, we focused the pilot activities on manufacturing SMEs. And uh, our initial efforts in the, at the start of the project were focused on engaging uh, companies to become partners or pilot sites. Uh, so we had a number of uh, pub, you know, publicity events and uh, at, at energy shows. And, uh, and then if, you know, we, over time, we built up a list of companies who were willing to participate. We, we began to gather information and uh, engage with the companies by uh, carrying out kind of short energy assessments in order to gain their confidence and to, to, to start to pilot the, the speedier service as well, which was um, you know, the, one of the innovative um, aspects of this project. So the, the companies that we got the greatest uh, traction with and the greatest work were, were, were are listed here. Uh, there's a mixture of um, kind of heavy engineering companies in terms of uh, all tech and PB machine tech, they manufacture animal diet feeders and hydraulic cylinders. We went into more high tech companies then where they're making robotic machines, um, mass producing polyethylene foam. Uh, we had two companies who were involved with very high energy users of, of electricity, in particular in gas in glass production, um, a forming of windows for the cabs of machinery. And uh, in, in one sense and in another case, they, they were toughening glass, large sheets of glass. So heavy, heavy users of, of, of energy. And then we had a, a, a group of food and beverage companies as well. So we had a nice mix of different um, elements within the, the different types of manufacturing and then food and beverage production as well. Um, so you could go to the next slide, please, Mariana. So just some 
images just to show you the we had um for example in, in Valencia Slate, which is a, a very interesting one, it's one of it's, it is the oldest quarry in Ireland, quarrying slate. It goes back to the early 1800s. And uh, as a point, little interesting point, it's the, the furthest west quarry in Europe. Um, they had quite an energy intensive method of quarrying big lumps of slate from the from the rock face underground. And we assisted them in uh, doing an energy analysis of, of a new piece of equipment, which they were considering uh, for cutting the slate from the rock face uh, for production reasons. But then when they saw the energy impact on it as well, it, it, it really helped them to, to decide to go forward with that investment. Um, other cases we had, um, uh, you know, the standard kind of lighting and heating improvements and upgrades, uh, starting with low cost and no cost measures and really um, just embedding the idea of energy management was really key. You know, in, in only maybe two of the cases had they ever conducted an energy audit before. Uh, and that was the case of Tipperary Glass, but they had, um, you know, they had begun to implement some of the measures, but what, what really came home from the speedier piloting activities was the, the need for the, the experts to, to really act as a facilitator in developing the energy conservation measures to, to, to make them, to get all the technical analysis done, to gather the information so that a business case can be put forward for each measure. Um, and as part of that process, it became clear that sub-metering of, you know, in particular electric, electrical um, consumption was something that was, in, was not in place in, in any of these sites. And uh, really, it, it was impossible for them to justify investment without having some sub-metering. So in a lot of these cases, we spent a lot of time putting in submeters on electrical supplies, maybe on a hot water system for the St. Ola Goats Cheese Company. We, we needed to separate their, um, their oil and gas consumption so we could understand how much was being used for heating hot water in cleaning down the, the production facilities. They had, they had no idea of the difference between space heating and hot water. So there was, um, so I think that's one of the absolute main takeaways here is that there's an, an ongoing need to to carry out technical, detailed technical analysis of the measures so that the, the SME and the management of the SME can have confidence in then going forward to, to look for, for funds, maybe to support or else to use their own funds from, from something like the ring fencing mechanism, which we'll talk about later. Okay, please, Mar Mariana. So some general points, um, we were really, had really enthusiastic engagement with, with all of our SMEs. They, they really saw the value. Um, as Ian mentioned earlier, it was a case that they were trying to, to have their trying to make their businesses survive the, the, the last uh, 18 months or two years. So they were very appreciative of the help that we could bring. Um, but that then also points to a you know a kind of policy like can we uh, and in Ireland, for example, we our national authority has provided a, a new um, scheme where um, there's a voucher for experts to come in and provide that just the same service to, to get these measures um, up and running. Um, so, you know, a lot of time was spent conducting energy assessments, uh, but as I say, producing the EC ECMs, the energy conservation measures. Um, some of the measures were actually commenced during our time, but um, some of them, a lot of them weren't. Uh, it was really, that, that's really where COVID hit us. Uh, that it, it took, uh, there was a big delay in the whole process. And then there, you know, the, the uh, prioritization of, of capital was, um, was difficult to secure. But in some cases, we did get measures to begin. But where we succeeded was to get a commitment from our SMEs that they, that they would continue with the process and that they, when the time is right, that they would make the investment. Um, so I suppose throughout as a, as pilot leaders, we learned a huge amount from these participating SMEs. And, uh, you know, as, as we went through, we were happy that all our targets were met. So next one, please, Mariana. So this is an overview of the, um, from looking at the impact from our, our project impacts. Um, we, we, just to show that the, the, the roles that are highlighted in light blue are companies that either had begun the process of implementing uh, ECMs or had, had made the commitment that they would. On the far right, we can see the, the, the kind of the major energy conservation measures that were identified. 
Um, but as I say, in, in, in all cases, the, the idea of no cost and low cost uh, measures were addressed first. And they were, you know, kind of basic stuff like assessing uh, energy bills, making sure they're on the right contract, uh, looking at the operation of their heating and lighting systems. Uh, in, in one case, they had a building management system in modular auto, uh, but it, it hadn't really been maintained for a number of years. So one of the ECMs that we uh, have begun is to bring in the building management system company again to, to review the design, the logic of the, of the building management system, make sure it's fit for purpose in their current incarnation and, and to uh, get the staff to, to understand how to use it. Um, next slide, please, Maya. And this is our final slide. So just to look at our, our targets. Um, and so our targets were categorized under the headings primary energy, um, investment in energy conservation measures. We, we included this uh, cost savings one was a, was a measure that we included as well. Um, tons of carbon saved and the number of SMEs that were involved in our pilot and the number of staff that we trained uh, within the SME. So happy, we're happy to say that we achieved all our targets and in some cases we, we did a, a lot better than that. So overall, we've had a really positive um, experience of engaging with SMEs, um, you know, working with our national policymakers as well to see um, what, what they are doing and, uh, uh, you know, happy to hear the inputs from our sister projects as well because it, it's clear that there are a lot of similarities in our approaches and some little differences here and there as well. But that's the summary for Ireland. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, certainly uh, it's important to this clustering that uh, Patrick was mentioning uh, before with the rest of the related projects, we can certainly benefit uh, one another from this uh, experience that we uh, gotten uh, over these uh, months. We will just move now uh, to the experience on the Italy um, pilot region. It was uh, Nicola, it's going to be the one Nicola De Giusti uh, from Politecnico de Milano, who will be uh, speaking about the experience of the Italy region. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, good morning, everyone. Now I'll give you a um, quick update and overview on the service implementation of Speeder in Italy. Uh, as you can see here from the dashboard, uh, we reached the most all of the targets that we fixed, um, especially in terms of primary energy, where we almost doubled the target that we had uh, from the from the project in terms of megawatt hour per year. Uh, we reached the almost fifty uh, thousand euros of investment targets from the SMEs. Uh, our uh, good performance also in terms of uh, tons of carbon emissions that we that the SMEs uh, through the energy conservation measures are planning to save. Uh, in this case, we have um, a number that is uh, almost the triple from the target that we had from, from the project. Uh, we met the target in terms of SMEs, so we involved uh, in the project through the collaboration with the ESCO. Uh, 10 SMEs from the industrial manufacturing sector. The last target regarding the training staff is the, the only one where we have a small deviation uh, due to different reasons, or above all, uh, related to the difficulties of the COVID period uh, and the priorities of the SMEs. But this number is, uh, and the activities of engaging training staff and training staff is still ongoing. So we will reach a higher number and we, we will likely um, meet the target by the end of the project. So in these last two, two weeks of the project. Uh, next slide, please. So if we can sum up uh, the, the main activities that we are, in, that we are proceeding with, uh, we had the engagement of 10 SMEs through the collaboration with the ESCOs that are uh, supporting uh, these companies, these small medium companies in the implementation process of energy conservation measures that have been identified, uh, analyzing their characteristics, their needs, uh, and their, their industry itself. And the escort uh, is supporting them, promoting the speedier concepts, tools, uh, as we will see later on, uh, the knowledge, uh, and especially the 
concept of a ring fencing mechanism where SMEs are starting from uh, no cost energy conservation measures that will lead to some savings in terms of energy and consequently in terms of economic savings that will be then reinvested in more in uh, higher cost uh, uh, measures. And finally, we have the uh, activity that is still going on of dissemination of speeder service to the SME staff and to other people engaged that can be engaged in the project to enlarge the awareness of the project itself and especially the importance of uh, uh, energy efficiency. Uh, next slide, please. So if we can um, draw some conclusions about the service implementation in Italy, we have that the implementation of the service and uh, especially of the energy conservation measures identified by the ESCO to support the SMEs is still ongoing. Uh, this is due to uh, different reasons, but the, the main ones are that the COVID-19 contingency have, uh, has impacted on the priorities of the uh, of the companies in this difficult period and and moreover some of the S ECM requ uh, identified requires some significant structural changes of the facilities considering that these are uh, industrial and manufacturing company which has which have different facilities and different uh, configurations um, all the revised target uh, as we have seen before have been reached with the exception of the train staff number which is slightly under the target but that will be increased uh, in the last period of the project through um, more dissemination activities and more uh, training uh, to to the sme staff uh, and finally we can say that we had uh, um, we had seen a, a good collaboration through between the uh, ESCO and the SMEs uh, uh, that uh, gave their commitment to go beyond the end of the project in the implementation of the energy conservation measures that they are uh, they, they are applying uh, and also to train train um, in turn some other people and future experts of, of speeder. Uh, thank you everyone. This is uh, I, I will leave the floor again to go to Mariana. Thank you, Nicola, for sharing the experience uh, in Italy with us. Uh, just move on to the last experience in terms of uh, pilot regions. Uh, we have uh, on screen Eva Martin. She will be speaking about the experience uh, from PCT Cartuja, uh, responsible for the Speedier service implementation in Spain. Please go ahead, Eva. Yeah. Um, hello. Can you? Yes, can you hear me? You can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, my name is Eva Martin. As uh, Mariana already said, I work at the managing company of the Science and Technology Park Cartuja, which is a science and technology park located in Seville in the south of Spain. And we are responsible uh, together with CTA, which is the, the other partner from, from Seville, uh, to implement the pilot uh, in, in our country. And in, for, this, uh, for this case, for this project, it's important to point out, point out that uh, our park is an urban park very close to the city centre, so there's no manufacturing uh, activity within the park. And we have focused in our uh, pilots, in both pilots, in the multi-tenant buildings. The first one, which is the one that you can see there, is a Techno Incubator, Marie Curie, which is a building for technology-based uh, startups. And uh, we have uh, uh, um, the participation of uh, 24 SMEs uh, within this uh, first pilot. And we have engaged them. Uh, then we uh, identified the, uh, the opportunities of uh, energy efficiency uh, by making the energy audits. And uh, that was uh, between the third and the fourth quarter of 2020. So we were able to uh, implement some uh, non-cost measures and uh, some cost uh, measures too, with the, was the replacement of lightning equipment in the, in the building. So that uh, we could, um, right now we are monitoring in this 2021 year, uh, the savings that we have uh, already reached uh, for these uh, measures implemented. So please, uh, Mariana, can you go to the uh, next slide, please? So here you can see the performance, which is the uh, blue bars are the 
the baseline uh, data from uh, year 2019 because of the pandemic we uh, prefer not to use uh, 2020 data because they are not so mm, consistent. So uh, the best uh, here you can see the the blue lines are the baseline from 2020 uh, 2019, and the white bars are the energy consumptions uh, after uh, carrying out this implementation of uh, energy efficiency measures, uh, which uh, we can. Uh, we can see there is almost 25% uh, of reduction on energy consumption in the whole building within the, these 24 uh, SMEs. And we will continue uh, monitoring and reinvestment uh, the, the savings in these uh, um, cost measures. And then uh, we have uh, uh, done the second pilot, uh, which was in the in another building, a bigger one, which is a, a business center called uh, the Italy Pavilion. And here we have had the uh, engagement of uh, 10 companies, not only SMEs, but even large companies. And uh, we have been uh, identifying the um, the opportunities of reducing energy consumptions and to improve the energy efficiency of the whole building, including the offices of every uh, company allocated there. And uh, we have um, finished uh, that uh, energy audits uh, by the third quarter of uh, this year, uh, 2021. So we have already uh, uh, um, identified these opportunities. So we have this estimated um, savings and the estimated investments that, that needs to be done. Uh, we have been working with the companies uh, try, um, trying to implement the non-cost measures by uh, promoting uh, changes in um, cultural and behavioral changes that uh, help us to reduce the energy consumption of the building. So uh, we are still on the way to implement the uh, next uh, measures. So um, this is more or less a summary of the pilot two. And then we can go ahead, please, to the next slide. So just in terms of uh, K performance indicators in the pilot in Spain, here you can see we have a uh, the engagement of 34 companies uh, with a, a participation of 20 experts and trainers, um, energy savings of uh, nearly 300 uh, megawatts per year in pilot one, and estimated of 900 megawatts per year in pilot two. And this, the investment done so far is uh, over 33,000 euro, but um, we're still uh, going on in this uh, in these uh, two pilots. And we have um, um, uh, we have the participation of um, uh, more than uh, 400 employees from the SMEs and companies uh, participating in both uh, pilots. So yeah, this is more or less the summary for the pilot uh, in Spain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eva, and thank you very much uh, for all the pilot uh, leaders, it was certainly interesting to, to discover how was uh, your experience uh, in terms of energy efficiency implementation in SMEs. Uh, we have conscious that uh, COVID-19 has widely affected uh, the results, but uh, even with that, uh, you've achieved a great goal. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, for the um, people attending this webinar, please keep um, the social media channels and the website of this video for more information about uh, this implementation because uh, you will certainly receive more news about uh, the future work uh, to be done in terms of energy efficiency implementation. We will just move now uh, to the, those uh, speedy tools I was speaking of in the beginning. Uh, during the project life uh, of Expedia, during 30 months, we developed quite a lot of uh, materials, and two of them are uh, two state-of-the-art applications. One of them is training up, and the other one is the energy expert support tool. And for their explanation, we will be having first Ruchi Agrawal from the IRC, uh, in Ireland, uh, speaking uh, about uh, how is this tool 
uh, develop and their functionalities, and then we will move uh, and leave the, give the floor to Diana to explain further about the Energy Express support tool. So, Ruchi, I suppose you are already there. Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Mariana, for the introduction. Uh, can we go to the first? So, uh, regarding the training app so first i we will discuss a little bit about why capacity building training is important for smes as you can see this capacity building training helps smes and their employees to understand the importance of energy assessment and what is the importance of metering and sub metering having having detailed energy data plus this and uh, plus with the help of capacity building training uh, SMEs can develop energy awareness within the employees of their organization. This will uh, this will lead to build energy culture within their organization, and again, this will further bring uh, behavioral changes towards energy consumption and energy efficiency. And finally, this uh, capacity with the help of capacity building training. Uh, this uh, training helps uh, encourages all the all the employees of the uh, SME to participate and to contribute. To, towards achieving the energy efficiency targets of their organization. Uh, so uh, for, uh, for providing this uh, capacity building training, we have developed a mobile app. So uh, before developing the mobile app, we thought why we need to uh, develop the mobile app, like why it is important, how this mobile app could be helpful to SMEs. So first of all, like uh, we all know, like people are really, uh, people are really uh, used to of using mobiles all the all, all the days so this is apart from other apps this uh, capacity building training will be one another another app which uh, people can use and it will help to uh, help uh, with the engagement of of all this stuff and this will help them to build energy culture within their organization and we have introduced some gamification feature within the mobile app which will help uh, employees to uh, to uh, use those gamification feature and and uh, have contact and uh, have uh, uh, and to in, and to know more about the energy uh, efficiency why why energy efficiency is important how energy management uh, can be uh, implemented in their organization and this mobile app is particularly help, particularly helpful if, uh, in terms of easy provision of information like uh, in an organization if you want to uh, if you want to provide a training to the employees, so usually what is the pattern is you will organize a web webinar or and you will take away all, uh, your all the employees and certain employees from their day to day routine activities to attend those trainings and webinars. But with this mobile, uh, with the help of mobile app, the people and uh, the uh, employees of the organization can uh, can. Uh, can get the access to the information and learning materials. Uh, to in the time which is easy and convenient to them in this way the mobile help will be help uh, mobile app will be helpful for the smes to uh, build the energy culture within their organization can we go to next slide please so uh, we'll quickly go through the some uh, main features of the mobile app so firstly we have developed a web and mobile version of the app for easy use and easy access of the uh, of the this uh, training tool so and there will be an admin and user account in the uh, in within the app so basically admin uh, admin account will be maintained by the energy manager or the speedier expert of the uh, of the of that organization and the user account will be for all other general employees so admin account will be responsible for managing uh, for managing the user account for of their organization and admin will be responsible for uh, managing different kind of energy related data for the of their organization which we will see uh, further and uh, uh, one more thing is this uh, mobile app is protected the data will be protected for each of the organization the data will never be shared with any other organization and another important feature of the mobile app is it provides an, it, uh, with the help of uh, this mobile app user can uh, have an energy monitoring so we have introduced many features of energy monitoring which will uh, usually what happens people people are really busy in their day to day activity they don't have time to uh, go through uh, go through uh, 
the energy consum to see the energy consumption of their organization what what kind of equipment energy uh, uh, energy consuming equipment have been installed in their organization what are the building rating and all those things so with the help of energy monitoring the user and employees will be uh, will be having an easy access to all this energy monitoring feature and basically this energy monitoring monitoring feature will uh, will help to build their awareness towards the energy uh, energy efficiency and some energy features of the of their building and we have introduced some gamification feature where we have uh, uh, through the help of quizzes and rewards so uh, we have introduced a section in the mobile app where user can where admin can uh, upload some learning material for their organization these materials could be entirely different for different organization these materials could be targeted as per their energy policy and their energy targets so this uh, materials could be in the form of word word file in the format in the format of pdf pdf file it could be images and even it could be uh, a url for of any website and based on these learning materials there will be some quizzes different rounds and different sections of the quizzes where user can check their knowledge with the help of quiz and for each of the quiz uh, they will be rewarded and for all of their activities within the app uh, within the app again the user will be rewarded and these rewards will uh, will encourage the user to use the app and this rewards could be like in the in the mobile app we have introduced some points so this and further if when if any organization wants they can uh, they can uh, introduce different kinds of rewards it could be like any certificate it could be any monetary reward it depends on the organization and another important feature no uh, could you please go back again so the uh, so one uh, one another and very important feed, uh, feature of the mobile app is feedback and suggestion in the with the help of feedback uh, a user can a user can uh, can contact and communicate about uh, their their thermal comfort of uh, their workplace with to the admin which is ultimately the energy manager of their organization and this way user can uh, user can uh, easily it will provide a easy way of communication and the and, and the energy manager of the organization can take action according to the feedback received whether it could be uh, thermal like uh, basically if uh, if a place is really hot or if it's uh, uh, the the illumination is low or if it's a drafty so admin admin or the energy manager of the organization will uh, will quickly uh, know about the about the thermal comfort of their organization and the 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 another important feature is suggestion where uh, where a user or a general employee can suggest an uh, a probable energy saving opportunity to the energy manager of their organization so basically we thought to people who who are working in the floor and who are actually uh, using the who are actually uh, who are actually there in the in the uh, in the working environment they are they better know about uh, about the energy saving opportunities so all these features will ultimately help the help an organization to build energy awareness it will encourage all the users to participate and contribute towards the energy efficiency of their organization so these are the main features and to give a flavor of what these what this app looks like i will uh, i will quickly show you some of the screenshots of the uh, of the mobile app can we go to uh, so this is the login page this is how you this uh, screen you will see when you uh, when you uh, the this is the first screen i would say if you uh, go to next slide please so this is the welcome dashboard so basically we will see how a user account looks like and uh, admin account looks like it looks very similar to this so this is welcome dashboard on the left hand side you can see various the menu with the, all the features which i explained you before this can we go to next slide please so this is the feedback feature and you will see uh, uh, there is a list of all the feedback provided by by a particular user and this is how you can uh, add a new feedback uh, and submit it to the admin of the organization can you go to next slide please this is how the suggestion look like it is very much similar and you can add a new suggestion can you go to next slide please 
this is the notification uh, like uh, if a user will be rewarded for each and every activity of their of their active in the mobile app so uh, user will receive all the notification press you can see there is a custom notification which can be generated by admin and can you see uh, next slide please this is the energy management. You can see here energy management uh, uh, and energy monitoring. It has been divided into three different tabs, buildings, energy user and equipment. In the buildings, you will see uh, the uh, energy feature and uh, all the energy related data of a particular building. Let me go to next slide, please. Here is the energy use. Here a user can see, uh, the user can select uh, the name of the uh, name of the building and they can see either energy consumption and energy cost on monthly and, and annual basis and this will be this data will be populated either in the table in the form of line chart in the form of graph and in the form of pie chart and they can be downloaded for each of the user so go to next slide please this is the equipment feature where user can see list of all the uh, energy consuming equipment along with the quantity power rating and type of energy being used for that particular uh, equipment and there is one ecm list as well this will show the list of uh, uh, ecm which has uh, according to the cost of uh, the ecm uh, along with the status of implementation in within their organization can you go to next slide please so this is the quiz you can see uh, these general quiz equipment quiz home energy quiz these are the various uh, rounds of the, the various categories of the quiz and the user can see best score of uh, themselves and user can see their position in the in the leaderboard in the learning section user can find all the learning materials available um, can you go to next slide please and in the my reward section user can see all the rewards uh, which has been available uh, which has been availed by themselves so this is uh, i think this is the last slide so this is the overall uh, feature of uh, how a mobile app look like uh, so that's all from my side thank you very much mariana thank you thank very you, much uh, for the presentation um you have a question on the chat, uh, Ruchi, if you could answer uh, it, uh, it was uh, Gabriele asking uh, what uh, does energy culture mean uh, for Expedia because they are also addressing energy culture in, in the VAS. So if we, you can take a couple of minutes to answer him, please. Yeah, and uh, from our side, we will um, uh, start with uh, Diana Romeo. She is responsible for the development of the energy expert support tool. And uh, I will switch off my camera and leave the floor to you. Thank you, Mariana. Um, hello, everyone. I will explain the work we have done the past two years with the Energy Expert Support Tool. Uh, this tool is uh, able to identify the opportunities for the energy conservation, me conservation measures within the SMS to streamline the energy audit process. So it's after the energy audit process. Uh, this tool is online. That's uh, uh, the the most important thing of this uh, tool, because it's online, you can check it everywhere you go. Uh, the expert after the energy process uh, inputs information of the SMAs and the tool automatically suggests a number of suitable energy conservation measures that then the expert and the um, SMAE agrees to apply. Uh, after the, the application of these measures, there's a follow-up. Uh, so they can, the expert can introduce the real data that it's providing, the savings providing in the periodic report. Uh, this, this tool uh, um, provides uh, theoretical data, but uh, after um, uh, the application of the measures, when you, the expert introduces the real data, the tool is able uh, to, to recap this information and, and to convert the, the theoretical data on real data. So he will learn during the process. It's a, a, uh, a ring system. Um, finally, you can you can find. Uh, I, I enjoy you to to try this this tool. It's on the Speedier website. It's, just, it's free. You just to be registering the tech website. It is an easy step. But then it's free. You can use it, please, uh, and check it because I think it's better when you use some tool that when someone is explaining to you. But we try to to show you how the the tool. In, uh, so we have made some screen captures. These are the main menus of, of the tool. Is the first thing you see when you, you log in. You can manage your project here. There's a list of your projects. 
There's also uh, on the top on the left, there's the four principal menus. There's the project list, the building information, the measures, and then the ranking. In this screen, as you can see, uh, there's all the projects that the expert has introduced. And they can be deleted, also edit. Uh, they can make a copy of the project when after a period of time they, they have been applying the first pack of measures, the expert and SMA agree to uh, continue with the process and apply another ones. So they can copy the project and, and try to apply new, new one measures. Uh, and then you can print reports. In this case, you can print simulation of the, the measures and the periodic report. Uh, you can also create a new project. Next slide, please, Mariana. That's a formula. You will see the formula of the uh, create a project. Uh, you have to enter some data from the project, uh, the country, the region, uh, the name, the surface. Uh, next slide, please. Now we are going to the second principal menu, the building information. With uh, there's, there's two, four sub menus: use details, economic data, energy contribution, and building information. Uh, we focus today in use details and building information that the main principal sub menus. In the use details, uh, the expert introduced the building activity and the schedule profile that the, the time that this uh, SMEs is working during the year. Then there's an annual heating hours and the annual cooling hours. For example, that is the information that the tool will give uh, to the expert. It could be changed, but it will give uh, it depends on the constant duration that it's uh, that is set on the on the project key information. And then the amount of users. Next slide, please. Then the expert has to complete a lot of information from the building information. They, they hear all the, all the captures, is the enveloping elements in facade, floors, and, and roof. Then the energy consumption elements, uh, the heating, ventilation, air and conditioning, the domestic hot water, the lightning, and there's also other equipment that it's not here. So they have to complete uh, all these formularies. Uh, and then when it's done, uh, have to close the building because the, the tool will provide some, some measures. Please, next slide. He, he will see the, the measures that the, that the tool will provide. They classified by no cost, low cost, medium cost, and high cost in different colors, as you can see. So the expert uh, prepares some simulation. And simulation is a group of measures that he, he or she uh, thinks that will be perfectly for the SMAs. So they talk to the SMAs and um, together decide which ones they want to apply. When that's the site, they just apply the simulation and they'll go to the next slide, please, to the periodic report where they can establish different periods. Uh, on the left, you can see that's the measures that they can apply. And then they, they go through the application of the measures and providing the savings that these measures uh, are, are providing. So uh, they can add periods, they can delete it, they can add different combustibles. And um, finally, the last menu is a ranking, is a gamification we have prepared, where the expert could, could, could see where's his uh, project uh, related to the other ones. Uh, we not uh, disclose our personal data, so that's for sure. So here, um, there's a whole list of the projects that I agree to, to, com to show here, but not personal data. Uh, and then they can be filtered. Uh, they can be ordered by, by name, country, surface, and activity. And on the right, you can see the savings uh, in percentage they have provided the measures that have found applied also, you can see it. Uh, and that's a, a quick view. I, I know it's a quick view, but uh, I think it's, um, it's a good tool. You can try it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we keep working on it. Thank you, Diana. I said it before, uh, it's a pity that we don't have enough time to see all the development, not only from Expedia, but from uh, the, the related projects that we had before presented uh, their um, achievements. We will just uh, move to the next uh, two presentations. We have developed uh, during these uh, 30 months of the Expedia project, some uh, good, very uh, good training uh, materials for experts and SMEs, and uh, in this case, we will be having again uh, on screen Patrick O'Reilly and uh, Nicola Di Giusti to uh, speak us uh, to explain us more um, about uh, those materials. So please, uh, Patrick, go ahead. Thanks, Mariana. Uh, yeah. So um, 
I suppose in the in the early the first six to twelve months of the project, we we really carried out a lot of surveys. We um, gathered information from SMEs in our four pilot regions, and we in I suppose we our objective was one of our main objectives was to do, develop a speedier service. And as that process um, went along, uh, in parallel with that, and I suppose there was a, a to and fro nature of uh, discussion amongst all the partners, um, uh, and th that eventually we, we came to the, the point where we had uh, training content defined for, on the one hand, SMEs, and then as Nicola will speak about in a few minutes, um, for, for experts and for, for trainers. But it was very important that the content was very uh, well aligned with the speedier service. And obviously to that end, one of the uh, point number four here on this side will, will speak about the speedier service itself. But it's, it's, it was very much a thing that grew from the discussions and the work of the project. So um, I'll just speak here for a few minutes about the, the training content that we developed here in uh, Technological University of the Shannon for the um, SMEs. Uh, we we ended up with six modules. We and I just read through them there briefly. We have um, climate change and energy management. So we've, we we could see very clearly in our engagement with SMEs that it was important to help them to I suppose realize or to give them some facts and figures to to about climate change and why it's important for them to take it seriously, how it affects their business how it's affecting Europe, how it's affecting policy from Europe, which is in turn going to affect how their marketplace and their, you know, their day-to-day -day business. So, and in that context, we wanted to closely align that with energy management so that they could see a direct link between the use of energy, um, energy efficiency and the impact on climate change. Uh, we then spent a good bit of time thinking about how behavioral change is going to play a big part in this. Um, uh, a lot of the savings that are achievable are, are done by a behavioural change. It's not necessary to, to go investing lots of money. A lot of progress can be made uh, in looking at developing an energy culture within an organisation um, so that it becomes a long-term part of the business, that energy management is not just something that's done uh, once uh, and then left there for five years without being developed further. It, it becomes an integral part of the business. And in that, then, I suppose the, in addition and in, in side by side with behavioral change um, improvements or energy efficiency that can result from behavioral change, there's, there will be times, obviously, when measures need funding. And to that end, the ring fencing mechanism was brought forward as a concept to, to help um, combine savings that are realized from from low cost and no cost measures and, and then that those savings, the, the money that comes from those savings can be maybe added to or augmented by uh, national funding schemes and other uh, sources of maybe finance for uh, realizing energy conservation measures. Uh, as we went through our piloting then as well, I suppose we were getting more and more feedback from our pilot sites. It became clear that in some businesses, um, transportation energy related cost was very significant um, and also emissions so it became clear that we needed to add a module on transport to to give uh, give that a, a bit of focus um, module four focuses on the speedier service um, and um, how to implement that how to how for how the expert is going to come into an organization and and to try and uh, develop the the the, the the energy culture and the service that is, is in a revolving service in nature, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. Part of that was the idea of an energy pyramid, which helps to focus the SMEs on where they need to start, what the priorities should be in terms of where they need to look at saving energy. Um, we then looked at funding options in the different pilot countries um, and methods for evaluating ECMs. And we also provided then finally a module on engineering calculations to help to build up solid business cases for the energy conservation measures. So could I have the next slide, please, Mariana? So on module one, looking at climate change and energy management, it's kind of um, the case that 
you know, we, we wanted to start off getting a baseline of where energy is used. So what are the types of energy that are being used? How, how well can the company break down the different areas that are the different equipment or the different processes that are using energy? And then to relate that back to the climate and to the, the carbon emissions. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's, it, that was something that maybe SMEs wouldn't have been uh, aware of, you know, the, the, the carbon impact maybe of using kerosene or versus gas in, if they need a heating system or, you know, the electricity suppliers, like the, the, the suppliers that can provide a, a guarantee of more renewable in their, in their mix. So that, that was the first, um, it's just a, I'm going to give a, an overview, just a couple of um, slides from each, from each module. Uh, moving on then to module two, which focused on behavioral change and the ring fencing mechanism. The, the idea of the ring fencing mechanism was that um, after an initial assessment, um, a, a register of opportunities is developed. And in that, we try to highlight any no cost measures that can be implemented. So the likes of uh, assessing the contract with the electricity supplier, for example, um, and any savings then that are um, predicted from that uh, effort, an agreement is reached with the management to, to ring fence that saving. Uh, and that will vary from business to business. It, it really is a discussion that needs to take place between the speedier expert and the financial uh, and controller, or financial manager and, and managers in general in the business. Because it's important to think about, well, how many years are we going to uh, claim that saving? Is it just going to be a, a saving that's used in one year or can it be spread across two or three years? Um, and when can we begin to spend that money on the next, the next layer of measures, which are the low cost measures? Uh, and, and then as low cost measures, you, you know, maybe we go through the, maybe we don't do any mid cost or high cost measures, but we come back and we monitor and verify the, the actions that have been taken in the first revolution of the wheel uh, so that we gain confidence that the business can see that this is actually going to help them. But all along in this, we're, we're looking at trying to encourage them to think about just not financial benefits, that there are other maybe soft benefits, there are um, be benefits to their business, that their customers uh, or maybe the people you know in the supply chain, that it's important for them to have some certification that they're um, involved in energy conservation and energy management uh, and doing their bit for the climate uh, climate change uh, crisis. So uh, all of these issues feed into the ring fencing mechanism and uh, it's, the idea would be that it's a constantly uh, monitored process and as, as all the no cost and low cost measures are, are implemented that we move on to mid cost measures. And, and as we get into the higher costs, we, we start to need to look out side of the business into what funding is available um, to, to maybe invest in, in some capital equipment to, to, to implement measures. So next one, please. So then transportation became clear was a, a big one. So just a couple of statistics. I mean, you'll all be aware of this, but the, you know, that road transportation accounts for over 70% of the transportation emissions in Europe, uh, you know, followed then with roughly equal 13 or 14 percent between each for maritime and aviation. So there's a massive uh, proportion of, of our European uh, emissions come from transportation and then breaking the road transportation down further. Uh, the the car, cars represent over 60 percent of that. And then heavy duty trucks and buses are, are 26 percent and light trucks uh, in, in the region of 12 percent. So this kind of idea of, of communicating to the to the SME management and to the staff to, to give them the bigger picture and then to see what can they do, what, where does the transportation emission, uh, energy co uh, consumption, where does that fit in their overall energy spend and then what's that, where does that sit in their overall spend, you know, in their, in their expenses. Uh, next one, please, Mariana. So module four then is, is, is really kind of a, a fundamental one to this project. It, it, it presents the speedier service on the left hand side where the, it's a, again, it's like the, the, the ring fencing mechanism. It's, a, it's a, a revolving wheel where we engage with the SME initially to get them on board. Um, the, the idea here was to develop a service that could be 
rolled out by independent speedier experts or energy assessors, professionals operating in the marketplace, that they could take this service on board, that this was one of the key um, uh, objectives of the project. So, um, and one of the things that came from our focus groups early on, where we, we spoke to a mixture of SMEs and um, energy professionals, was that, that there was this uh, difficulty that the SME didn't want to invest maybe a few thousand euros on a, on a big comprehensive energy audit, um, only for the report to be left on a shelf. Um, and then, you know, the, from the perspective of the energy uh, assessor, energy auditor, they need to be sure that some kind of a contractual arrangement can exist where they would be paid for their work. So that whole process of engagement um, is, is really critical. Um, a, a staged approach was the one that came out as being uh, the desired one that we you, you do an overview, try to identify some quick savings or some, you know, whatever, maybe if there's been audits carried out already, they're already gone down the road, but whatever the next level of, it, of uh, action is to identify that action, go ahead and implement it, and then basically a review, review that over a period of time, and then go back into the, the process, uh, repeat the whole process again, and move on to the next layer. So it will vary from business to business, depending on how much energy management work they've done already. Um, this cut the cut just to go back for one moment, uh, Marianne, and I'll hurry up. I know I'm pushing it. Uh, just the energy pyramid was one of the key concepts because when we went to SMEs, it was, uh, you know, very quickly the people in the companies would talk about installing photovoltaic panels on their roof because, you know, it looks good and it's, uh, they think that it's a great thing to do. But, you know, and in some cases it is a good thing to do. But in most cases, it's not the first thing they should do. And it's very clear that they need to start off at the bottom of the pyramid and they need to, you know, eliminate leaks. They need to eliminate energy wastage of any sort. If they have uh, air compressors, they need to make sure there's no leaks, you know, basic housekeeping stuff. And when they have all of those measures done, uh, looked after, they can move into the middle of the, the pyramid, which is to start to assess if, if equipment needs to be replaced or if new equipment is needed for a new process to make sure it's as energy efficient as possible. And once all of that is dealt with, only then should they begin to consider the use of renewable energy as an alternative to paying for mains electricity or paying for gas or oil or whatever. So some key concepts there in that module. So next one, please, Matt, Mariana. Um, in each pilot region, we, we sought to identify and uh, you know, communicate the, the most up-to-date position on funding options. So this is just an example from the Irish uh, region where we have a number of sources of funding, but the, the probably the, the, the most, uh, one of the most important ones is the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. So here are a number of schemes that are administered by them on behalf of the Irish government. There are also some other Enterprise Ireland and then more local uh, Enterprise Office schemes and, and a few other sources of funding. So we were able to research these and then to be able to explain them to the SMEs. Uh, next one, please. And finally, then, as we said earlier in the piloting, um, you know, the, the, the rundown on pilot activities, the, we found that it was the most value that the SMEs got was uh, our ability to spend time with them as part of the speedier project, um, developing energy conservation measures, carrying out calculations, um, you know, making sure that they assumptions were sound that they in some cases went off and installed sub metering but you know a lot of this re required a basic level of engineering calculations or just energy um, calculations to make sure that their proposal was a, a valid and solid proposal that that would yield because I mean while they look for the soft benefits and they very much were interest, interested in that and would promote soft benefits there was the very the first priority was that there was a financial logic to an energy conservation measure, and that is based on you know technical logic first and foremost. So we, we felt it was necessary to provide some basis for that. Uh, so that's that's it. I think um, uh, an overview of our. Uh, Thank you, Patrick. Uh, yes, very quickly. I suppose we deliver the, the these modules to SMEs. Um, a number of methods. Uh, either in some cases face to face but a lot of the time virtually uh, we, we you know we ran some uh, uh, 
we have a Digi Eco, for example, initiative in Ireland where we're bringing SMEs into a room and we're, we're training them over two days on this as well as digital skills. But overall, from a project point of view, all of these materials are available in our online learning section and they have been translated into the languages of the four, into the other three pilot regions. Um, and you can access them on the website as shown on this slide. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Uh, let's move to uh, Nicolas' presentation. He will develop further on these uh, training materials. Yeah, thank you, Mariana. I will try to make it quick since we have other two sessions to be presented this morning. Um, as we were mentioning, we had uh, we have a session uh, part uh, regarding the learning materials on the website. Uh, where we have uh, a lot of material that has been developed and presented during the project uh, in different formats. So we have the mobile app, uh, some training videos, the speeder service case studies. Then we have the speeder service guide for, for trainers. Uh, we have also performed a lot of evaluation service during the project itself. And of course, uh, uh, different PowerPoint presentation that have been developed to expert trainers and SMEs during the, the course of the project and the training event. Um, so now I will focus more on the um, training of energy expert uh, after the presentation of Padraic regarding the SME stuff. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, regarding the energy expert training, we have uh, two different uh, training event, but during the project we develop different materials and content uh, as support. Uh, and in particular, in the last in the last um, event, we um, covered uh, some important topics that uh, have been uh, important for for uh, the expert. Uh, regarding the to have an overview of the energy efficiency uh, concept so we started from an introduction to the energy efficiency concept with the the main benefits and the main barriers related to this uh, scope uh, then we move to the presentation of the main energy efficiency technologies both in the res uh, residential and in the industrial sector we also talked about the regulatory frameworks. So as we were mentioning also before about the funding options, some other regulatory schemes that are present in the four pilot countries. So Italy, Ireland, Romania, and Spain. Uh, then we move to uh, a presentation of the energy efficiency value chain, analyzing and presenting uh, the most important actors uh, in the value chain that can allow uh, the, the interventions and the energy, the implementation of energy conservation measures. Uh, regarding this, we uh, also we put a particular attention and a highlight on the role of energy service companies. So the, the so-called ESCO that can give a, um, important support to, to the companies in their implementation of energy conservation uh, measures and, and interventions. And finally, we also talked about sustainability related to uh, the concept of energy efficiency. Uh, as also Patrick was saying before, this uh, training content is all available in the Speeder website uh, in the four languages, uh, English, Italian, Romanian, uh, and Spanish. And on top of this concept, we also developed um, an education kit for the Speeder trainers, which consists on a, um, some methodological and teaching notes uh, uh, about how to effectively deliver the, the training content to the speeder expert. And, uh, um, and so the importance of the communication, the communication key skills and the communication characteristics that needs to be developed by, by trainers to uh, develop the so-called train the trainer program and enhance also the dissemination and the training of these concepts to, to more people. Okay, um, so we, we held the two different training events, uh, as we mentioned before. The first one was held in, uh, at the end of 2020, in particular on the 2nd and 3rd December. Uh, here you can see the training event agenda. So we had an introduction to speeder service, uh, the, the concept of building an energy culture, the new approaching in overcoming the financial barriers, uh, and then the presentation of the Speeder tool and Speeder mobile app, as well as the impact assessment of the Speeder project. 
while during the second training event uh, that we held uh, uh, almost two months ago on the 29th September and the 20 and the 30th September, uh, we covered the topics that I was talking about before. So uh, an introduction of the energy efficiency, the energy efficiency technology, the role of the ESCO, um, the regulatory framework and the energy efficiency value chain. Uh, these two events, uh, as we can see from the next slide, uh, uh, reached the, a lot of registered entities, so more than 210 registered entities uh, that are characterized by uh, a different variety of, of, um, of nature. So we had SMEs, we had universities, R&D institutions, we had authorities and governments, uh, other associations, energy auditors. So uh, they showed a lot of interest in the, in the project. And as we can see from the last slide, uh, so we had uh, um, uh, a very positive feedback from the participants of the two training events. Uh, thanks to that, we, we were able to spread the speeder service to more than 200 experts and trainers. And we also created in the speeder website a list, so a sort of database where uh, are registered uh, exp the speeder expert and trainers uh, who participated to to these events and who were trained by the by the presentation on, on the topics mentioned above. Um, finally, we uh, delivered also a certificate of attendance to the all the participants who been who took part to these events, and to some of them uh, we also delivered a certificate of speeder expert. Uh, when they showed the uh, uh, positive commitment and um, and they were able to answer correctly to some questions that we delivered to them after the, the event. Uh, so this will end my, my presentation. So thank you again, and I will leave the floor to Mariana. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, I certainly invite you because uh, Nicola was mentioning uh, the two events we held uh, two months ago and past year. Uh, they are available online. You can visit uh, on the Speedier website, the training section, and you will find all the materials over there. Thank you, Nicola. Uh, we will move now to the Speedier replication and business models. Uh, you've seen uh, during this uh, almost two hours and a half that the Speedier has focused uh, in four main pilot regions, but the idea is to continue with this service all over Europe. And uh, for that, we have created a roadmap for this replication and the different business models. In this case, we will be having Ruchi Agrawal from uh, IRC uh, speaking about their speed of replication and then uh, Carla Sebastiani from Sustainable Innovations will uh, develop about these uh, business models. Ruchi, I suppose you're there, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. So as we heard all about the Speedier, how it works, what is the concept behind the Speedier? And you saw uh, the Speedier is, uh, was piloted in uh, four European countries. So in order to replicate the Speedier in other, other European member states, we have identified a list of recommendations for the member states so that recommendations will help them to implement Speedier in their uh, countries. So as you know, uh, Pottery Lions was uh, uh, talking about little bit about the online service uh, in the in his in the first presentation. So to start the project, we conducted some online survey. We conducted some interviews with SMEs and with energy experts, and we identified a list of barriers. And based on those list of barriers, we uh, with the help of uh, as a as a speedier solution, we have identified a list of recommendations. Uh, for example, if uh, uh, for the barrier identified was lack of finance, the speed and the recommendations for energy energy export to help uh, the SMEs to overcome these barrier uh, like uh, is promoting the zero, co zero cost behavioral changes, switching to better tariff, uh, uh, a better tariff energy supplier and offering free energy assessment and offering the self-financing mechanism. This uh, will help uh, uh, energy exports uh, for promoting the speedier 
in a way uh, so that the lack of finance is not a barrier for smes similarly uh, you can you can see there there is some barrier like lack of regulation there are there is a barrier about lack of in house expertise on energy management so we have, so for uh, for energy expert who wants to implement speedier in their organization so in in their uh, country what they can do is they can uh, they can uh, they can help smes uh, uh, in a way uh, to outsource uh, in a way to present speedier as outsourced energy management and it will and also it uh, Uh, there is a recommendation for energy expert to engage the staff at all the, uh, at all level of the organization can you go to next slide please similarly we you can see uh, there is a, another uh, another uh, a barrier identified as lack of time there's on uh, people uh, sometimes we found during the interviews people fear the with the word and with the term called auditing so we so better to uh, present this in a more positive manner uh, and use the term energy assessment instead of energy management and uh, certain uh, certainly uh, we, having interview with smes we found that it, there is a lack of contact by energy experts so uh have contacting the smes in a straightforward way and tailoring the uh, the uh, the service as per their need uh, will help so will certainly help to boost the uh, speedier services within their country can we go to next slide please so apart from this some additional recommendation is for energy expert is to engage with the senior management at and at very early stage and identify what are their key, key priorities and present the speedier service as as uh, th that will uh, according to their key, keep keep their priorities then um, uh, another important recommendation would be to make them understand not just the hard benefit which is about energy saving and cost saving but also some non cost benefit which is we which is ha which has been identified as soft benefits which could be like uh, uh, having a green image of their organization uh, having a good faith in the customers and all those things and uh, and one more uh, and very important recommendation for the speedier expert or energy expert which is that speedier expert should remain neutral they should refrain for uh, recommending any particular brand or any particular product to, for, during the implementation process can you go to next slide please so uh, apart from this again like the, these survey were uh, held at the start of the project and after in, after having uh, having the uh, speedier pilot implemented again we conducted an online survey with the participating smes and we and we, uh, and the major major findings were about how speedier change how speedier was helpful for changing the behavior so uh, you can see majority of the smes they agreed that speedier will help them in a very positive manner it helped them to to uh, have the impact on on their behavior it and they will, they are willing to continue and collaborating with with the speedier programs they are motivated To, with the to carry out this behavior transition and all those things so smes are really happy with the uh, with the with the speedier service uh, in terms of having a good uh, having a positive impact in their behavioral changes can you go to next slide please so some uh, replication recommendation these uh, to help uh, energy exports to and and for the for the uh, for the government regulations uh, to replicate the speedier in their organization are uh, so okay the first is uh, uh, you saw according to the survey and the and the learnings from the previous work packages the success of implementation of speedier in other uh, uh, other european member states depends a lot on different uh, different factors as the energy culture in the country for example what is the people uh, what is the level of uh, awareness of people regarding the energy efficiency and energy transition and this factor is really uh, it's a uh, really relevant in terms of smes involvement in program like speedier when uh, when people feel responsible uh, and they, they 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 are happy being part of these improvements so, 
further another uh, important aspect to uh, into consideration is work condition of smes in each country um, it has been uh, from the surveys it has been shown that the countries with the poorer uh, work condition uh, smes feel more pressured by the time and by the money and becoming uh, and uh, and implementing the ecms and becoming the energy efficient efficient organization is a low priority for them so or uh, even something that is uh, that is not at all problem uh, for for them uh, you know they they don't even care about the energy consumption of their organization so therefore uh, the more pressure they feel in, in on their business they feel less worry about energy saving and the energy conservation and implementing any kind of energy conservation measures on the other hand it is important the way in which the energy audit and the ecm implementations are regulated in the country what is what are the regulations of in their uh, in the country is there any uh, uh, mandatory energy audit for uh, for uh, for the smes and uh, uh, how uh, and for for example in case of italy escos are the ones they who are carrying these tasks so in it so it works in different way in different pilot uh, in the different pilots and different countries so uh, so uh, so uh, so implementing a service like speeder depends a lot on uh, how what kind of regulations are uh, are uh, present in the country uh for this reason i would say for all these reason approach should be uh, different depending on the depending on the uh, depending on the condition and depending on the uh, need of the market of the organize of the country in this manner uh, like in countries with uh, as as i mentioned earlier countries with the uh, work work condition for smes and a low awareness of energy efficiency a spotlight should be uh, should be uh, more on on being involved in speed being uh, should be uh, more that uh, being involved in the speeder is not a kind not, not a time consuming it helps them it helps their business to uh, save money and to achieve those targets by outsourcing about by outsourcing all the time consuming activities to an uh, to an outso uh, to an uh, external uh, energy manager and in contrary if we can say in countries where where work conditions are better and and where smes are smes and their employees are having higher awareness regarding energy efficiency and energy conservation measures their uh, speedier could be uh, could be represented in a different way uh, which says uh, uh, with, uh, highlighting not only the advantages that it could uh, that could uh, have that could have the uh, that it could uh, have on the business but also uh, in a way that it will help them to, uh, also towards the knowledge they can gain uh, in the field of uh, energy efficiency and how they could participate in a more in a more active way uh, to help uh, the uh, to uh, to help the uh, achieve the challenges towards the energy transition and uh, um can you go uh, go back to the next slide please thank you ruthy uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you but i think we are running out of time and i know uh, carla has to switch Uh, to another okay, meeting so I, so i would like to conclude uh, in a uh, by saying one line that uh, so replication of speed here depends uh, depends a lot on the uh, uh, on the work environment and uh, regulations of the country and the speed here service should be tailored accordingly so that's that's the final words for the replication recommendations thanks a lot thank you ruthi and sorry to have interrupted you um And I have to apologize to the attendees because we are fifteen uh, minutes late. Hopefully, you can join us for the two last uh, presentations: the one from Carla and the one for the standardization by Tom Flynn. So, Carla, uh, the floor is. Thank you, Mariana, and thank you, Ruchi. Um, okay, so as we all uh, been. Talking about during this presentation, one of the most innovative parts of Speedier, as mentioned uh, before, during other presentations, is the ring fencing mechanism, which basically attacks one of the main um, concerns that SMEs have 
and that they continue to have um, since we have been tracking the process of the of the project through surveys and um, having feedback from the SMEs, they continue to have this problem where they uh, have trouble financing uh, energy conservation measures. So this is a way where we can um, provide a self financing mechanism where as well, it was claimed before, I will not go uh, more much more into detail, but as you can see, you can start by implementing uh, zero cost measures and then start saving uh, on the middle of the of the mechanism and use that money that you go so as you save it, you can implement it in other measures as you go. Next slide, please. So from Speedier, uh, we produce three main key explorable results, which are, let's say that the results that were produced uh, and developed during the project by the project partners. The first one that was presented by Diana from Intech is the Energy Expert Support Tool. This tool um, is made to work with a database of SME characteristics um, and also with the no cost, low, medium, and high cost solutions. And it will estimate the associated energy and cost savings for these measures. The target of this um, expert tool is energy agencies, SMEs, and auditors. And the value proposition is to provide the speedier expert, which we have uh, also trained during the capacity building and training programs from inside of the project is to provide them with a tool uh, so that they can track and they can become uh, the SME energy manager so that the SME staff doesn't have the responsibility to follow um, these uh, measurements. Next slide, please. Then we have the training and capacity building materials that were presented um, on the presentations before this one. Um, they have well, practically two legs, the materials for the staff and the materials for the speedier experts and trainers. So uh, the target for these are speedier experts and trainers and the staff from the SMEs. And the idea behind this is to train these speedier experts to become speedier trainers so that they can further train new experts and the service can continue to go on after the life of the project. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, as explained by Ruchi, uh, we have the speedier app, which is an app that's meant to boost the awareness and to serve as a platform also for capacity building. It is intended uh, for the employees of the organization so that they can easily access the information. The target uh, for this app are energy agencies, SMEs and auditors as well. And the value proposition is to provide this content um, to achieve one of the first steps that we that we want to, which is uh, the awareness around energy uh, conservation and zero cost um, energy conservation measurements. Next slide, please. So yeah, the actors in the speedier service are, as I mentioned, the experts and the trainers, which are kind of like that wheel that we continue to train and create new expert who will provide the speedier service to the SMEs. And this solution, um, it, it, it was created to overcome the SMEs initial barriers to implement energy audits and energy efficiency measures. Um, and also it collaborates with the ambition of the EU member states of energy efficiency goals. Next slide, please. So finally, um, these are the, the three results. These results will be uh, taken by their corresponding partners that created them. 
they are uh, either owned by one of the partners of the consortium or more. And the way that they will be commercialized would be the energy expert support tool will have a software copyright license run by eTech. The Speedier app will also have a copyright license right, uh, run by IERC. And the training and capacity building materials will be, uh, of course, have creative copyright, but will be available online and through the Speedier app. You can check all the services uh, on demand through the Speedier website. Next slide, please. Okay. I leave the floor then to Mariana. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carla. And sorry again for being late. Let's move to the last presentation. I see some is already prepared to go ahead with the best practices and standardization uh, that we have learned on a speedier. Uh, Tom, please uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. And uh, good afternoon and good morning to everybody. Um, I'm very pleased to talk to you today about standardization, but really what we're going to do is talk a little bit more pre-standardization. Um, because we're running out of time, I will go through it uh, reasonably quickly, but what I want to talk to you, say, say a few things first of all. First of all, we, we delivered a better practice guide based on the interoperability components of the speedier energy efficient uh, software tool that Diana spoke about uh, earlier on. So if you're involved in energy efficiency, if you want to get to connect with them, there's an opportunity there. So, so this now better practice guide exists. And this will be a live document, which means that as we go forward with speedier and, and they develop the technology, the document will be kept uh, alive and, and, and will evolve as well. So, so that's one of the important things to say to you. The second thing I want to say to you is that we, we moved away from traditional way of developing standards, but we're now powering um, the, the ownership to be with the people who actually are responsible for developing their technology. So, so there's a, there's a train, change going on at the moment, and we've been in contact with the European Commission in this specific area who, who have endorsed it. So uh, there are some of the key messages that we want to get across you today. Now, I know we're short on time, so I'm going to give you a, a quick presentation on um, standardization and pre-standardization. So very much of what we're trying to see showing in the slide here is that I'm telling you, every standards are everywhere. The piece of paper in front of you, the doors, the windows that you look at, everything is standard. The wind, windmills, they're, they're all there. Um, and it's all kind of been driven by a directive, that, which is known the key one is to be the European Energy Performance of Building Directive. And from there, we have bodies like at a European level and international level, SEN, SEN, SEN -ELEC, ITES, all there. And then we have national level as well. So it, it, there's kind of a, a communion of, of standardization out there. And some of them they produce along the line are kind of important to us. One, you know, the ISO 1000, uh, 50,001, the energy management standard. Then we have the almost near Senji, uh, zero energy building uh, standard is all there. And the more recent one there is uh, the 630521, which is all about power frequency over voltage to protect its devices. So standards will continue to, to grow and they're very, very important for the specific sector. Um, so I'm gonna go to go to uh, an overview now of standardization and show what's going on. So, sorry, next slide, please, uh, Mariana. Yes, just, just to bring this one to your attention, this is the uh, uh, one of the most important ones known for everybody, is the energy management uh, system. And what they've said here is that by, by using it over an 18 month period, they actually got payback um, uh, through, through applying of, of, of uh, 1.5 million an energy annually, annually. So they estimated that 75% of the savings were delivered on low cost measures requiring no capital investment. So, so standards can contribute to savings as well. And this is part of, 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 of the benefit of, of standard stations. Next slide, uh, Mariana, please. So on the top level, you would see here just uh, this diagram. We see the connectivity taking place. On high level, you see the national, the like uh, DIN in Germany, after North France. Um, and then we had, like I said, the NSAI. So they, these run across and then they link into SEN, which is the European level body, um, and then they are the international level. So they all can, all all connect together and when it comes to technology side of things then we have the likes of the the um electro technologies the center center and then linked into the international electronic community so so they're all there they're all working and connecting and so it's almost invisible to you but it's all in the background so just to go to the next slide please mariana so yes so if you want to get involved in standards there's things you can do so so the send uh, technical committees exist and if you want to produce a standard Rather go through a thing called a CWA mechanism, which I should bring to you, explain to you next. That's a pre standardization. All you have to do is contact and say, Look, we want to develop a standard and engage with them that way. So that's one thing to do. So, and another thing that the SEN 
these committees do. They set up these working committees. So the experts all over the place, depending on the areas, they're all working and they're reporting. So the cycle exists there at a Euro European level and it's quite solid. Next slide, please. So the Sen Sen Elect, they're, they're an organization based in Brussels. And, and um, as I said to you earlier on, if they, they, they help to revise standards, improve standards. And they've also set up this thing called a fast track uh, standardization mechanism, which is known as CWA. And we're going to just take a, take a look at that next. Uh, next slide, please, to Mariana. So the, the, the thing called a CWA is a sense uh, workshop agreement document that's 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 delivered by that and this is like a pre-standardization so it's never full standard but it's a pre-standardization it's a step in stone me mechanism so what they're trying to do is promote more work to do with, with standardization and getting it and the principle behind this which was done a long time ago uh, it was just like if you were doing some work in pre-standardization we could turn it into a full standard and that's the principle that they're work, working from so that mechanism is there there as well at the moment and i'm going to drop in the next slide please so, however, um, in 2019, we got involved with SEN directly and they, they started to change the mechanism. And what I'm showing you here is like a, a, the stepping stone to develop a pre-standard at the CWA. So you go off, you put proposals in it, you develop your project plan, you have open community commit comments, you have a kick-off meeting to develop the standard stuff, and then have more, more uh, comments coming through and then you finalize it. So that cycle exists there and then you have, have to do it. But what you can see they're highlighted in, in green are the, are the colors project plan development, CW development, and CWA finalizes. This is you as, as the developer have to, have to do this. And what they do is do the periphery side of stuff. So it's, it's a mechanism there. So only, only the NSBs, which is national standards bodies, and centers like are involved at, at call like the minister's level. And that's, that's, that's a mechanism that's out there at the moment. It's known as a fast track mechanism. You got the next slide, please, Mariana. So we started that way initially in the um, speedier project, but rapidly we moved away from it because when we went out there to try to get things moving in the right direction, we found ourselves having some difficulties. Now that difficulty led us to get involved in, in an alternative better practice initiative guide, which we're developing in a separate project. And, and, and there's a principle for that, because why was that? Because we wanted to go forward with what is, the knowledge was with, within speedier project, but the cost involved to develop it and the mechanism was kind of confined, confined to how they did it. Um, so we found that we found difficulties in, in, in cost. They wanted high cost. So you can see at the very end there that we had uh, one NSB uh, did not provide a CWA service. The second one that they just hadn't got the capacity to do it. So there's no resource available. The third one, which is number C, wanted to charge 36, uh, 37,000 for a secretary role um, and a stage payment. And the final one wanted to try 28. Uh, 25 and really this is what you do you're paying for secretariat uh, administrative set of rule but the real work is got to be done by the people promoting the the, the pre-standardization and that's that's it and remember the thing i said previous on all you need to do is rather go down the specific route is actually go direct go directly to the um, um, committee um, technical committee and and engage with them so you can bypass this one and this got us thinking about the about how to do this all completely differently. So the alternative better practice guide initiative was kind of formed and, and I just want to talk about that next. So we go to the next slide, please. So yeah, so we, we approached the European Commission about this whole approach and, and uh, uh, they understand, yes, there, there needs to be another way of doing just, you cannot rely on, on the CWA mechanism. And they, they've actually endorsed what we're saying. And it is in this call with the DG Home, they actually promoted the whole concept of an alternative way to, uh, known as the Better Practice Guide. And they said they're very clear that no mechanism exists to ensure that standards is developed in close cooperation with key stakeholders at such as policy making practitioners at all levels. So they wanted that. So in the call there, the, the Horizon CL3, the rest one, they're actually looking for fresh ways to which the pre standardization is done. And we're actually kind of, kind of doing that in this specific project in other areas. Next slide, please, Diana. So the fresh thinking is, we want very much so to impart pre-standardization with the experts. They're the people who do it. They have the knowledge and capacity. We want to be flexible. In other words, we want it to work for them. It becomes a de facto standard. And, and they control the, the pre-standardization pre journey. They're not, they're not enforced to do it in a certain manner. They, they move in a certain direction. So the freedom is there. And by, by, by doing that, it allows them to say, look, we are moving forward in your standard. We have, want more people to engage with us. We're stating things are, but we're doing a manner form that works for us. And that's what the commission are actually kind of embracing through that, that specific call. So 
at this moment of time, we're trying to encourage more organizations in energy to develop an, their own pre-standardization or a better practice and initiative in a way that kind of works for them. And the cost will be low. So in a, in a sense, what we do, we're trying to change the mechanism. And I, I said this way, previously it was the tail wagging the dog. Now we want the dog to wag the tail. And that's the principle. So the ownership is back with the, with the people who are promoting it and they are empowering the pre-standardization mechanism. And if they choose not to go into a full standard, that's their call. But at the, at the moment, it's all about pre-standardization. And, and, and that's the initiative that's, that's been kind of endorsed by the European Commission. So we did some work in this in, in Swedish area. So let me go to the next slide. So yes, there you can see there's a framework mechanism ongoing, and we're doing this with with, um, uh, with members from um, the B BA system, uh, 3M, French Ministry of Interior involved as well. So there's a lot going on, and we've looked at three specific areas. We looked at three domains: the uh, emerging medical service, operate security, and two are developed in the project called No Fear. Um, and one is to do with interoperability. And interoperability again is very, very important going forward, as in, in no matter what domain you're in. So now we have three platforms who are dealing with. Um, uh, serious issues like issues on, on the streets uh, of uh, attacks, terrorism, um, all those areas. They now have three, three specific platforms looking at different aspects of it, now engaged in sharing knowledge. And that strengthens the, the core outputs. And therefore, that means that the, those who face the, the bad guys that go on the street are working on it. That's actually there. The other one that's there at the moment is to do with damage control. And this is like physicians dealing with the lives of patients on the on, the, on their uh, theater. And they come up with a mechanism that works. So they have a, what we call uh, pre standardization better practice guides and, and and that's where they are at the moment so this is this is this, this is not they're not standard but they're better practice guides and this is the mechanism that's going out there another area that's going on is the area of e health and this here we have a cluster working where a number of projects come together and they're now going to start sharing data uh, in the area of artificial intelligence so the data sets will become common and, and that means that knowledge uh, capacity will be allowed to be shared and therefore the outputs of the, the solutions will be for the benefit of, of, of in this case the patient death or so um, of the, but the one we've done in, in the speed of as I mentioned earlier on is very much looking at the, the, the interoperable component um, of the iTech solution um, and that's the, the speedier energy expert so, solution and uh, I'm very pleased that that's there now that which means that other technologies who want to engage um, with the iTech solution, uh, very much have the opportunity to this guide and, and it's done and informed that kind of works for, for iTech. You go to the next slide, please, Diana. Diana, okay, so here you see very much, so we've, we've um, as I said earlier on, the initiative for the better practice framework has been developed, um, led by ourselves, working very much so with uh, people from BA, Tria and the French Media of Interior. And we're going to develop this framework to make it forward. In the area of energy, we've, we set up what we call uh, an education community of use initiative. And on that uh, governing committee, we've, we've got um, Ian, who's presented earlier on, Senna from Spain, Deca, who's on the advisor board, and the Tec Technical University of Munich. And there's there's a lot more going on in this specific area, but one of the things we try to bring in there is to um, foster this whole, whole initiative to strengthen um, solutions. In other words, uh, pre-standards that will be developed. Once they're developed, it means that more knowledge is shared in a way that's going to work for them and the empowerment we go empowered in there. Should they choose to go on to a full standard, that's their that's their priority. But we're going to have yeah, to have more and more what we call better practice guides develop over time. And that will come under the auspice of the uh, energy efficient community use initiative. Next slide please. So now we go, we take a look specifically of, of, of what we've done. So Diana gave a very um, good presentation earlier on this morning, explaining how well that the uh, the, the tool that, that's there in Speedy works um, for, for, for them and, and how we in Speedy have been enjoying it and it's been used uh, quite enough. And we saw many presentations from Paul Pernick was showing exactly how many people have gone for training course about it. So we know about it. So, but the whole tool solution there to, to help very much so people uh, in the energy assessment exercise that, that's, that's going out there. So that's, that's the tool we worked on. So we go to the next slide, please. And it complies very much with what Article 8 is looking for, because Article 8 is, is a very much so a, a, the instrument that the European Commission promote in the Energy Efficient Directive. And they talk about projects, they talk about tools, and they talk about, pol about policies. And very much so we're using the whole area of, of, of software tools to make this go, make, make this work when it comes to energy assessment. And as I said, the, uh, one of the important ingredients is, is, is going forward in all kinds of war, the domains is interoperability, and that's going to grow uh, more and more important as we move forward. And the, the European Commission have direct specific sign for that one area as well. You go to the next slide, please. 
So the guy said earlier on is, is that is the message that it's a living document. It's not going to it's not going to kind of be done and finished. As the technology evolves, so will the, the living document. And what and what the organization I take do it, they want to get more organizations engaging with them so they can get the benefits of of, of the of the database solution that they had. And we have now um, going to go to the next slide, please. We show you some of the uh, the things. So this is this is the area that that's kind of covered in in the a API. We we have the resource um, description, of the full coverage that we use. Are defined in the better practice guide and it covers all the issues that are related to uh, engine management platform the tools and ecosystem the tool itself it there's a, there's a there's constructs in there and this one's an api so it talks about um you know how how to communicate um what what are the constructs that you need to do in order to bring your solutions um in, into uh, um in, into the um the better practice guide solution that we have here um uh, well, I take at the driving stage. Then naturally, we have some kind of security controls as well. So the guide is built all around these these, these definitions. If you go to the next slide, please. So yes, um, having the interoperability, I think, is very important. It, it has key key very much so characteristics uh, for the uptake of the speedy service beyond the life of the project. Um, and I kind of uh, emphasize the importance of interoperability. So by having it within Speedier, it means that other solutions can actually start communicating with them. And by having other solutions be able to communicate, the offering can be stronger over time. And I believe that that, that will grow. And as I said previously earlier on, we're addressing the, very much the Article 8 of it. So we go to the very next slide, please. So this is very much so probably my last slide I, I, we need we need to share. And this is coming from Yusinto. Uh, and he he very much so is where is, is Diana's boss, I could say that politically. Uh, and uh, he heads up the Department of Sustainable uh, Construction and Ag Tech. And he made it very clear that by having the guide there, the API engagement will, will enable other software related companies to engage with it. And therefore, being efficient to know the investment energy rehabilitation action, their payback period in line with the integrity in yeah, I take engagement methodology. So the premise is, is there that you you will have access to to the database. You see see, see the savings, and um, it's by having that guided there, you know what what's what's needed. And this is all done in line in line with very much so with the methodology. So what we've done is that we've now got the better practice guide guide done is based on the interoperability component it's done very much in the manner form that works for AI, AI tech and so so the empowerment is with them should they wish to turn into a full full uh, standard that will come in time but for now very much so it's in in, in their control and and that's the difference that that we're doing at this stage we're not going through what we call pre-standardization because that was designed by SAN, followed their specific rec, rec, uh, their mechanism and with high course, no, the empowerment, the empowerment very much so with those who are promoting um, their, their, their mechanism. And we do, as I said, to the, uh, the better practice guide. And that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you very Tom. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, and thank you very much, all of you not only for participating today and being quite active uh, on the chat and also with the presentations from the related projects of Expedia, but as well uh, for being so patient because we were running late and you were uh, still here. So thank you very much. Uh, this is not the end. Uh, you can continue follow following us uh, on our social media channels and website. We will continue updating with all the information and work we've been doing and uh, the work we will be doing uh, probably together in collaboration with a related project as well. So thank you very much, uh, all of you. It was a pleasure uh, seeing you today. Hopefully you have a nice uh, afternoon and evening. See you on the next webinar. Bye. Thank you, Mariana. See you, everybody. Bye, thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for Thank you very much. Bye. Bye to all. Bye.